The price of freedom is death. We are coming to get our check. Black first, my brothers and my sisters, welcome to the Afro Elite YouTube channel. I am your host, Afro Elite. And before we get started, please make sure that you guys are subscribed by hitting that subscribe button and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Also, leave a like and share this on your various social media platforms because all of that helps the reach and it helps the growth of the channel. And for everything that you all do, thank you sincerely. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have a very special broadcast to show you how appreciative we are of you. Now, before we get started and before we bring up um, our guest, I want to give a special shout out to our good brother, Iron Will. Iron Will sent me this uh, when he's in here. Yeah, just drop your link, brother. Drop your link. When he's in there, I I like this. You know, the sleeves are cut. The the quality, great quality. Okay, the logo is like in what they call that in bro in breaded and something like that. It's like it's like it's a good. You you hear it. You hear the pop. It's it's crisp. I like it. I like this. Okay, so shout out to him, Black Owned Business, FBA brother. I see you, brother. Salute to him. He can drop his link in there. Y'all can check that out. But without any further ado, let's bring on tonight's special guest. Um, Let's bring on tonight's special guest. Starting off first, we have our guest, Dr. Clyde Winters. Dr. Clyde Winters, how are you doing? Oh, wait, hold on. Dr. Clyde Winters. Dr. Clyde Winters, how are you doing today? Fine. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Now we have another guest. Of course, y'all love him to come back, and he's back. Dr. Randy Short. Dr. Randy Short, how are you this evening, brother? Oh, I, I'm white, sir. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that means great. Okay, so I want to bring you all back. Um, because everybody loves the the teamwork that you guys have, you know. Um, everybody loves the um, the chemistry that you all have, especially knowing each other on a personal level for so many years. You know, of course, it's almost impossible not to build a strong bond, strong brotherhood between the both of you. And the both of you have accumulated so much knowledge, and people love to hear that. So. It's definitely a blessing to have both of you guys come back, and I'm very grateful for that. Now, um, tonight's subject, because we're moving in this era where we're talking about reparations. Um, we're talking about um, get, getting our finances together, getting our families together and everything like that. We're talking about these things. And as we talk about the issues and the things that are affecting the community from the outside, we also have to talk about how we can fix problems from the inside out. You know what I'm saying? Because the body, you want to you wanna put a, you want to cover the body so nothing can affect it from the outside. But you also have to make sure what's inside the body is good. You know what I'm saying? So as if black society is a body for this analogy, we need to make sure that we correct ourselves, that we heal ourselves. You know, when we start to regulate within our community, you know what I'm saying? Um, Cause that's definitely something that we're going to need. And, and, and we, we've been needing, we needed that a while ago and we've gone far too long without that. So based off of um, those comments, just off the title alone and the subject matter, is there anything initially that you brothers would like to say? Um, do you want to go first, Doc? I want to. I want. I want to let the OG, the, the, the OG, the, the, the sunglasses. I mean, I, I, I gotta wait for you, Cab. Oh, oh, okay. Well, look, we really need to be declaring war on enemies foreign domestic external and internal and uh the time for kumbaya and holding hands and waiting for people to get it has been over for 50 years and we don't have a lot of time um the people that hate us remind us constantly 
it's to the point where the media doesn't have enough space to do uh, sports and weather <laughs> doing cases of black folk being murdered. Um, we have a whole bunch of people that are cowards and they need to be set aside. We have a bunch of gatekeepers that are scum that need to be driven out of the way. But I want to say something uh, to the younger people. You younger people are fuck-ups as a collective. The reason why I'm going to say you're fuck-ups is that you're critical of all the older generations. But you guys have a pro you guys have this respectability contradiction where you respect uh Oprah, Michael Jordan, you you respect uh stupid mumble rappers, you have people that you respect that you should have no respect for, and your generation and those before, you don't move them and in fact you defer to them. To me, it's outrageous for people to be critical of people who did some struggling years prior. And your generation doesn't struggle at all, except they struggle against wearing a belt or dressing appropriately or even making decent music. It's, there's a, a, a nihilism. There is a rebellion only against any kind of order, but no rebellion for anything that sets order, which means that all this energy and anger and angst is, is destructive instead of being constructive. The Panthers made a movement. SNCC made a movement. The Republic of New Africa made a movement. Um, there is no grassroots movement among young folks who have more access to information than anybody ever dreamed of. And we don't have shit to show for it, but we do get a lot of criticism based on your chronological age and it doesn't make any sense to me. And last but not least, of all the generations, all of them having their problems, this particular one, is blowing everything out in terms of suicide, STDs, murder, divorce, abortion. I mean, everything that's death oriented seems to be the direction that things are going. And I'm not saying that the problems didn't exist before, but uh, there was pushback. Okay. There, the kinds of murders and things that you see that the police do or what happens amongst ourselves, stuff didn't always rock like this. This has actually gotten worse. So for the people, the old school, old days, there's a lot of criticism to go around. But I'll say to you, the younger ones with the energy and the mouth aren't producing much. And if the best people can do is jump on board Black Lives Matter or Black Youth 100 or some fake uh, controlled opposition bullshit group that anybody my age could have told people, don't even mess with Black Lives Matter. It's shallow. We saw it. People wouldn't hear us. <laughs> people wouldn't let us say, don't go with Obama, please. Kamala, she's not... We, we can't, you know, of course, don't talk to anybody that's not in your generation as if all knowledge is based on the lack of time you spend on the planet means the smarter you are. No other group of people functions this way. And that's not to say that people, just because they've lived a long time, have wisdom or knowledge. But um, to suggest that just because people have lived a long time, that they don't have wisdom and knowledge is just the stupid. So there should be a call to embracing intelligence, throwing the weed away, throwing the BS away, for, be, for people to know that there's just male and female shit. Y'all talk about us failing with black and white. You guys are fucking up over whether you're boys or girls, men or women, whether, you're, whether you've got a clitoris with testicles or is that really a penis? 
I mean, if some stuff comes out of it, I think that should be enough litmus test. But, you know, they'll just say, I'm old. <laughs> I'm old fashioned. All right. That's what I want to say. Go ahead, Bishop. Take over. Well, you know, uh, you, you hit the uh, you hit the nail on the head. And, and what, what you said is very important is that black lives matter. Just like black power. Those are slogans. We have to move. You know, we had to move away from a slogan you know, and go to a code. And this is one of the reasons why we deal with, with Neely Fuller. And what did Neely Fuller said? He says that when you look at history, when you look at history, you have to look at history, not based upon, you know, uh, how great we were, but based upon, in a sense, how we can make things better. It's very important to understand. Every Saturday, every Saturday I look at Karen Hunter and Greg Carr, and uh, they, uh, they're talking about uh, uh, Black history. And uh, I'm a historian, so I look at it. But you see, when they talk about when they talk about the history of black people, they're talking about black black people and black history from a bourgeoisie perspective. Very important to understand. They're talking about our history from a bourgeoisie perspective. And see, eco bombing, right? And see, because of the fact that it's, it's boule history, what we find in a sense is that just as uh, just as Dr. Short was bringing up, many of you. Have, have been conditioned as young people to, to see success, not in a sense being successful because of the fact that you have pride in yourself, you have a direction, and you have a culture. You see success based upon these images of these middle-class people like Oprah Winfrey, you know, Tyler Perry. But see, these people are middle-class, and see, you have to understand that middle-class people are assimilationists. And assimilationists are people, in a sense, who have only one goal. And their goal, in a sense, is to be what? Their goal, White. Their goal is to get is to get power. Their goal is to get social position. Their goal is to buy whiteness. And see, what you have to do is that you have to fight caves. What is caves? Caves is culturally acquired immune identity deficiency syndrome. You have to fight caves because, see, many people, because of the fact they want to buy whiteness, they go into a direction in which, in a sense, they lose themselves. You see, because just as just as Neely Fuller and just as especially Harold Cruz has brought up, you have to understand your culture. See, if you want to self-correct, people have to have to find self-correction through their culture. Many, many foundational black Americans, they don't even know their culture. They don't even know we have a culture. And because they don't know we have a culture, they fail to be able, in a sense, to be able to fight caves a culturally acquired immune identity deficiency syndrome. You see, we must understand that we have a tripartite organ. We're not just Africans, you know. We're not just Africans. Yes, many of us came from Africa, but we have a tripartite origin. We're descendants of the Aboriginal Blacks, who we call Indians, the Black Indians. We're descendants of the, uh, of the Irish, who came over as slaves beginning in 1656, yes. Black Irishmen, I know you don't want to hear that shit, but it's the truth. And number three, African people. And so then when you understand in the sense that we have a tripartite origin, you understand the uniqueness of our culture. We have a unique culture because the fact is this is that we don't even understand that American culture is our culture. For, for, for white people, for white people in a sense, they feel that they feel that culture is what going to an opera, which came from Italy. They feel that culture is what hearing classical music, which black people made in, in over there in Europe. We we'll just let them think it was whites that done it, or they feel in the sense that they should they should do their their dances that they had in their homeland, Agnazi dances, maybe river Smith dance. That's right, river. Well, river dance that they got that from us because that was that was what the black Irish did back in the day. So that's uh, mm -hmm. that's something that we started but they stole it, like they stole everything. But see, so we had to deal with culture. Culture is very important because see, culture, culture determines who and what you are. The food we eat, the American food is what? It's, it's soul food, chicken, rice. You see, you know the music, we know the music is nothing but black, black music. That's American music. Very true. You know, very true. You know, we know in the sense that every great invention, we made it. Even though they want to, even though they want to believe they didn't, and so until black people understand that number one, we have a culture, and number two, in a sense, that because we have this culture, we have to, we have to, in a sense, 
be more respectful of ourselves. And most importantly, we have to understand is that we've seen the English language as a deficit. But you've just heard Dr. Short speak. And Dr. Short is very eloquent because Dr. Short, he controls, he dominates, he owns the English language. But you've been taught, you've been taught by the master, the white supremacist, that, that English is not our language, you see? But it is our language because when we were on the plantations, they wouldn't let us speak in our native uh, Indian languages. They wouldn't let us speak in our native African languages. As a result, as a result, we in a sense learned English and that's why the best, the greatest speakers of the English language are black people. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, James L. Jones, Dr. Short. These are people in a sense who've mastered it. See, look at the rappers, look how rappers, they took this language and they're able in a sense to craft in any way we wish. So we had to move away from under, we had to move away from this lack of understanding that we do have a culture, that English is our language. And because English is our language, we have to use it to be constructive. Yes. yes. And we have to use it as a way to make sure that we're understood. And so see, if we want to have black self-correction, we had to begin with the culture and we had to learn how to punish, you see, and they had, when they had a freedom movement in Kenya, what did they do? They had the Mau Mau. And what did the Mau Mau do? The Mau Mau went around and kicked everybody, Uncle Tom's ass. I don't believe in murder. I don't believe in killing. But sometimes you had to find a way to get people on code. Mm, uh, yes, sir. The way you can get people on code sometimes, <laughs> you have to use violence. And I don't, don't look, don't, I'm not saying violent. I'm 72 years old. I got I got 26 seconds of power, baby. Ah! But after 26 seconds, you can just touch me on the forehead and I'm gonna fall my ass to the ground. But you, 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 baby, you got the power, baby. You got the power, baby. We got and, the power. And, Tell them about it, Dr. And, 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 and it was said by uh, France Fanon that every generation has a responsibility to uh, achieve what its destiny is. And uh, you can't achieve that destination if you've got gender dysphoria or you think smoking weed is new. First of all, the shit you have now is GMO weed. It's not even the good shit that we came up with. So <laughs> and I just wanna say the music was better. The dope was better. The STDs were curable. <laughs> Whatever it is that you're getting into that's negative, we did it and got away with it. But it doesn't happen anymore. You've got to make a decision now to change your ways. And we're, it's going to come with some force. You know, um, it's time to declare war on the enemies of our people. It's time to declare an amnesty for anybody that wants to be on code don't be mad. I know folk, they'll look and say, well, Afro Lee, he light skin, he don't understand. <laughs> and yet niggas pumping enough history and shit to be Malcolm X, you know, and a little pint jar, right? Uh, or I know folk, um, we, we look for reasons to not come together. We need to stop doing stupid stuff like that. We need to give amnesty to anybody that wants to stand up. And we need to go to war with anyone that's a coward. And we need to go to war with any foreign or, uh, or external enemies. Otherwise, if we continue what, like we are, more people are gonna get shot in what I call instances of African trick-or-treating. Like the African guy shot in Kansas City and the mama guy shot down in Florida. Whereas the mama that got shot down in Florida should have known better as a Southerner. You know, you don't go to white people's doors and stuff in general. And you definitely don't go to a white person's door if you've got a beef with them, especially in a state with the stand your, your ground law, which basically means shoot a nigger law. I mean, and you, yeah. and you went without something and you took your child with you. The, look, the white broad didn't shoot the baby too. 
But see, this is the second case. This is the second case of the ignorance. Uh, uh, a, a couple of years, I, uh, I mainly taught, I taught uh, in Chicago for over uh, 46 years. Uh, during the uh, pandemic, I taught in a suburban school. When I taught in a suburban school, I had African, I had, I had some students from Africa. Mm. You know, and, uh, and, 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 and this girl and her brother, she acted like she was scared of, she acted like she was scared of uh, FBA. You know, your teachers are black, but she's scared of us. And her brother's scared of us, but they're kissing, they're up these white people ass like they can do something to them. Mm. I'm convinced, I'm convinced that that lady, you know, I'm convinced that that lady who went to that door, she has to be an immigrant. She has to be what they, they don't want to call them immigrants nowadays. She has to be a migrant. Mm -hmm. Asylum seeker. Yeah. You know, she's well, her, her first name is Ajike, which is an Igbo name. Her mother's last name was Diaz, which is a Latino name. So I'm thinking that there's some kind, there's a possibility. I, I, I sent that question to Tariq uh, Nasheed. Uh, we need a CIA as the people. In fact, that's something else you young people have all these computers. Uh, forgive me, but you motherfuckers have never hacked anybody. Y'all should be hacking police departments, finding out corruption and police murder and so forth. I mean, all this ability, people, you know, people used to touch our genitals, you, you know, touch yourselves. You didn't have anything on the plate with when we were young. You guys have digital shit. <laughs> And, and, and you're not using it. Um, people really need to figure out ways to get information. But I, it, I feel like that's why I called it African trick or treating, because mm -hmm. a black person that knows their culture would never go. I would have called the police. You threw a skate, uh, and uh, uh, you threw something that could kill my child, and hit him with an umbrella. And, and, yeah, and you stole something. I, and I'm going to just walk up to your house and I, I've got to say something. If if they're not foreigners, then that woman's a pork chop. It's a but black they're, woman they're, that's off code who foreign. basically should be a foreigner they because foreign. they don't think that racism applies to black women. Um, we have a lot of, pardon my language, dumb fuck black women out here who think racism is black men's problem. Well, and I have a pussy, I got it covered. It ain't so. Um, the pork chop feminist power comes from white supremacy, rewarding off code sell out trader sisters, See? and they think that they got mm -hmm. power, but just as sure as they wouldn't arrest that white lady for shooting that black woman in the chest. That shows you that power. They can use that. And notice you don't see no man on the scene, which means if they are four kids, she probably ran the man off. She, so she has enough power to kick a black man out of the lives of his children, but she didn't have no smoke when that white woman blew her ass away. Here's and this is what the pork point. chops don't get. Here's the whole point. It is no, it's no black woman that lives down in the South that would have went to some white woman's house, period. Cause, Cause that black woman would know that automatically the police gonna come and be on their case. And That's the right. Be on the side of her. The reason, that I, the reason I feel that she's a tether is because of the fact that there was no man around. You mm. see, that's what they do. That's why her mother got a Spanish name. She got a she got in a sense a, an American name. That's because of the fact she probably uh, found a brother and uh, had some babies by him. And then once she thought that she had the babies and everybody was anchored in, then she probably kicked the, kicked the brother out the house. Mm -hmm. This is what I believe, and, that, she, and that's why I'm calling it African trick or treating. It is because she got a she went to she went in a sense to get a treat. And she got a trick. And she got a trick. That's what I'm calling it. You can say it, say it, Elder African trick or treating. African trick or treating. Just like yeah. that young, that young, that young, uh, that young boy who went to the door. Remember, he, he was an door, African trick or treater door, too. African, too. African trick or treating. He's all trick or treating. Look, look, my mama, my mama, and my father. They told me I don't know what I don't know what they teach people today. Afro Lee, you correct me now. You correct me. I don't know what y'all parents teach you. But my parents taught me that 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 they killed him a till because he was messing with white women. That's why I never wanted no blood, no white thighs. I played football at the University of Illinois linebacker. See, they threw them white thighs at me every damn day, and I said, no, 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 mm -hmm. I don't want those white thighs because see, the whole point is this: is that 
People think that when they get that whiteness, they get around white people. And a lot of Africans, like I was telling you about the students I had when I was teaching out, teaching out in the suburbs. See, a lot of these people, they don't they don't have to live in the ghetto, these Africans. A lot of them come over here, they let them live in a white in a white neighborhood, they let them live in a white church. And you know, they really believe that they got a touch of whiteness. No, you are not. Sure. And can I give an example? Go ahead. Right now, as I'm as you're speaking. I, I know of a situation of African trick or treating. Uh, a, a person that I know from Uganda, okay, wanted me to meet their nephew that's here in the United States. And I kept saying, okay, well, give me the details about this person. Oh, yeah, you need to meet him, you need to meet him. And uh, I finally got a call from him last week, unannounced. And what I was told was that he had moved from California to North Carolina. And could I do something? And see, I don't live in North Carolina. And so I kept asking for more detail and I didn't get it. So he called me and I was thinking, I told, dude, that's not how you do things where you ask me to help someone and you don't give me what the details are. But then again, Africans, even when they're cool, they, they, they have a, a get over ski user type tack with, with us. And um, anyway, there is a, this man has from Uganda has a wife that looks like she's either half white or Latino or she's super light skinned. They got six kids and they moved into the furthest the, the 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 most western county in the state of North Carolina. You know that most black people in North Carolina live in either the uh, northeast, southeast, uh, central, uh, and the big cities. Okay, Charlotte, mm -hmm. Raleigh, Wilmington, um, Durham, Greensboro, Greenville. Chapel Hill, right? Um, they tend, but these this this family is in the Great Smoky Mountains. We're talking about they moved from California to Clan Central. What? I hadn't even heard of this place in North Carolina, and I've had family in North Carolina three hundred fifty years. Uh and. But I heard him. Say, I thought he said Murphy's near Murfreesboro, and Murfreesboro is in Tennessee. You know, they're up in the Smoky Mountains. They they have Nazis and Klan all over the place there. You know not to go there. I mean, you know, I know you know winters not to go too far. Stay away from the Smoky Mountain areas in uh, North Carolina. You know not to go there. I mean, I I when I, I heard Murphy's thing immediately. I was I was afraid and mm -hmm. I'm not even there to not go. Okay, I already know I'm a southern this hell just when I heard where it was, I was just shaking my head. It has to be fucked up. First thing I did was look for the town and put in the word Ku Klux Klan and boom, the Klan activity all over the place. But the African trick or treating, thinking you could just move from California and you just and you've got six black kids in an area that's basically in America, 2023, when you're in an area that's 90 percent white, you know, that's a problem. That's what's called a white enclave, an ethno state area where they don't want they really don't want you. When it's 90 percent, they're not even letting Asians in yeah. and you black up in there. Are you crazy? But see, they, so, they you know, they don't know they're crazy because. They, no, they, he, they, he they, know he he know he crazy now because he he told me he's not staying. He didn't have to tell me when I saw him. Was, let's see how long this lasts. I, I mean, his, I mean, if he don't wake up, he's gonna be a headline. <laughs> Shit, you better get your ass out of there. I'm not in it, but you know, Africans moved to Montana, to Utah, Wyoming, to South Dakota. Yeah, they picked these places. And always get white women wherever they go. Yeah. It's sort of like, you know, peanut butter and jelly, African male students and white women. It's the white, <laughs> it's the white, it's white itis. It's white, I call it white itis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. White itis. You know, when I was going to university, when I went to our University of Illinois back in the 70s, 
Mm. You know, the first thing I did, I got that he's white girls. Can I give you a blow job? Hell no, you can't. You can't touch nothing black on me, baby. And so then, but these other brothers, I had, I had this. Uh, the guy was who was my uh, my dorm, my dorm rep. Man, he caused so many venereal diseases. It's that's cool. that, that's exactly right, and that's why I always would say to them, "My cum is white. Why do I need you?" I heard that. I heard that. You see, see? And so I that, hadn't thought about that. Best part of me is white. Yeah, and see, and then I saw basketball players. I saw basketball players at Illinois. You know, see, if you go with a white girl, you can't quit a white girl. You can't quit a white girl. You mm -hmm. See, when you quit that white girl, she's gonna say you raped her. You mm -hmm. see? And so, and therefore, in a sense, my mama taught me well. I didn't mess with them. I didn't mess with those people, you know. And the thing is, this is that this is what this is what we have to do. We have to understand, in a sense, that just because you get white itis, that white itis is, is going to betray you. You know, look, look, look at North Africa. When you see the Moors, you see a beautiful black, black and brown people. You see some of them even blue. But then you look at the hair, the, the harems of these Moors. They had about two or three hundred Ukrainian women in the in the damn in the damn uh, harem, and that's why today North Africa is is white. You see, because of those those white guys. Look at our black athletes. Look at these people. They got to get a white a white a white in a sense a white woman. A lot of these tethers from foreign countries. They got to get them a white man because that's why they move they moved to Wyoming because they feel in the sense of that they feel the white man is God. See. He, he, he is uh, to them. And I think that we think he's God too, but we don't like him. See, they love white Jesus. We put up with his ass. <laughs> I like I like the way you put that. We put up with him. But the thing is, this is that, that, that this white eye is this cage. You see, a lot of people understand is that, is that when you catch these, you catch this whiteness, it can have an effect on you. Jamie, uh, Jamie, uh, you know what's his name? Uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie Fox. Fox. Jamie Fox. Jamie Fox. When he when he was dealing when he was dealing with uh when he was dealing with sisters, he was okay. But what happened for the past ten years, past 10, 12 years, he's been uh, humping on those uh, on those uh, on those uh, snow bunnies. And what happened when he when he had to go and take that shot? When he had to go and take that shot because see you gotta you gotta get the uh you gotta take the venom. You know, before you can uh, act in a play or act in a movie nowadays, and see, people don't understand that. See, sex is dangerous because see, every time you have sex with somebody, you're transferring your genetic material. I don't care even even, even if you put that even if you put that white man's dick in your mouth, you're transferring material when you when you're in a sense of having sex with this white woman and you and you and you and you're penetrating her. Whenever you have your orgasm. That opens up the chakras. And when it opens up the chakras, you exchange your genetic material with the person you're having sex with, and they're exchanging with you. Anything that go in is exchanging material. And so then therefore, what happens in a sense is you began in a sense to create a monster. Have you noticed, like, look at Mar Mariah Carey, then that other girl that, that sings in New York. You find that in many of these, these families where black men where black men were their fathers of these mixed race people, they die young. But they die before they, their kids would get stronger because they take on that genetic material from those Europeans, you see. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be racist. I'm just trying to tell you that who you screw is important. Okay, so, and this is why also, not just who you screw, what you screw. Whoa, whoa. And that's one thing that's very important I know I made a lot of enemies and I'm gonna make some more today. <laughs> and all of y'all that like me making enemies, y'all see my cash app and I'm doing a fun drive. Definitely send me a piece. But let me just say this to you. Um, um, who you screw is what you do. Your race is who you are. This during this damn pride month, a whole lot of people think because they have a white dick in their mouth, they white or a yeah. white dick in their behind. Or if they're munching on carpet, there are a lot of folks. Some of them are called feminist. And if they're too ugly to get a cute, cute white woman, they call themselves a womanist. That means they stuck with black women. Um, 
they think because they've munched on carpet that they sisters. And yet you see a black woman shot, beat, smacked around by police, and a lot of times shot by other women. In fact, I was told a story. I won't tell you who, but they uh, were at a party and a, a white woman shouted out to the black man's black woman, come over here, you black bitch, and sit in my lap. With hundreds of people there. And if a black man had said, come here, you black bitch, and sit in my lap, you know, that's World War Ten, right? Neutron bomb. Um, I can recall when I went to divinity school, I don't remember the woman's name, but there was a white lesbian there that was always hanging with black women. Mm. She looked mm. like uh, Joe, Be Joe Pesci with brown hair. And I remember seeing her on the subway here in D.C. yelling and going off on her black girlfriend who was crying like a child. I know mm. goodness well, had that been a black dude, they would have been fighting. So it's like it's so interesting when you see black uh, people get into these uh, ethnically blended relationships, how meek and mild and loving and patient and compassionate. Have you ever seen a black dude raising a white woman's bastards from another man? And he's the perfect father and shit. They need to put him on TV, give him a sitcom carrying 10 bags of groceries and opening the door with his foot to let this white woman who's got fewer teeth than I've got fingers on one hand. Um, the kinds of things I've seen is just outrageous. I could see if she's fine, at least uh, be pretty. But I, I, I mean, I was in Kentucky and there was a white woman. I mean, you know that song, Moon River, wide, Wider Than a Mile? Well, she was wilder than a mile. <laughs> and, and 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 no teeth, and maybe that helps her with fellatio. You know, you know what's that song by uh, that group Slave Slide? And dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so maybe that helps her slide. Why don't you slide? Okay, <laughs> look, and he's taking care of these kids that are a white man's kids. But you know what? He probably has black children. He's not taking care of. Yeah. What made you so noble when the kids were white, but made you ignoble when it came to your black children? A good example and, of that. A good example of that is a lot of these uh, black uh, basketball players in, in the NBA. They, or they, singers they, and stars. They do it too. All they, of them are trash. That's right. They they uh they they get they get a black woman pregnant. They they don't want to take care of that baby, but then they get a white woman pregnant. They're ready to take care of them. You know. And they get excited. Right. Shamar Moore. Shamar Moore. Although yeah, he doesn't you know, have, he uh, didn't have Twitch. any children though, huh? That guy Twitch who uh, who killed us, they he killed himself because he lost some money in crypto. He used to be on uh, on what's that lesbian you said he uh, the, the uh, morning uh, show? degenerate Evan yeah. degenerate that Oprah Winfrey brought that stud to us. She yeah. looks like um, um she looks like Gilligan from Gilligan's Island with autism with the bad nose. And that brother on there, remember, he was married to a white girl. Mm -hmm. and he was taking care. He was taking care of some white man's uh, kid. And Bastards. Thing is this I know Willie D. Willie D. is always implying that he thinks that they uh, that they murdered him. I don't know. I don't know. But all I know is this: is that 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 see, if you deal with these snow bunnies, if you deal with them, you're asking you're asking for pain. You see, because mm -hmm. the only way we can have black self correction is that we have to fight case. Culturally mm -hmm. acquired immune mm -hmm. And you know it's a complete betrayal. You went from getting lashed across your back by a white man to being lashed in your rectum by a white mm -hmm. man. Yeah. I want to understand why anybody, I don't want nothing on my back. <laughs> you know, like they, 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 were playing, they was playing up this uh, they was playing up this guy today, gave him a war. Uh, they gave him a war because he was in some play on Broadway. And he bragging about he's fat with his ass hurt. I know your ass is hurt, you see. But the whole point is this, is that it's, it's this whole idea of trying to destroy us as a people. See, mm -hmm. self-correction self -correction only comes when you begin, in a sense, to recognize that there's a problem. Yeah, yes. And, and, and that's it. Let's get to it. We do have a problem. 
and in fact, one of the greatest betrayals, and I did it on my um my live on fake book. Um we have enemies. Mm -hmm. And what I despise about most nigger preachers, and if you're a nigger preacher, I despise you if you don't teach black folks that we're hated. It's interesting. You get a goddamn Bible and you talk about the hated Hebrews the whole way. And you just talk about people hated 2000 years ago. And yet you can't extrapolate that our asses are hated in America right now. We do too have enemies, lots of them inside and outside. And anyone that doesn't do that, and I have a little teeny tiny church. Yes, I'm a Negro minister, but I'm a black nationalist Negro minister. And I teach people, people absolutely do hate us. They mm -hmm. hate us for our beliefs and they hate us for our skin color history and the fact that they're on land they stole from us. And see, that's, that's what critical race theory is about, why they hate it. Derek Bell, Derek Bell, he, he came to teach us. Whereas Nelly Fuller taught us that we need to have a code, Derek Bell taught us in a sense is that white people, number one, critical race theory, white people, number one, they hate you. Yes. Number two, white people want to kill you. Especially the Satan, uh, the one in Florida. He is the devil. We need to declare war on him. Now, you know, I'm registered as a Republican, but let me just go out and say, fuck the Sanders. This is just, we're going to start it early. Yeah. Okay, uh, fuck him. And I just, to hell, hell to the no. In fact, um, He's just Hitler with the different nose with no mustache. All right. That's real talk up in here. And uh, we need to say if we were really brilliant as a people to start saying that there won't be an America if DeSantis is elected president. We'll Punk see. his ass. He shouldn't even be considered. We need to start hurting people. In fact, let me just tell you, we there needs to be a lot of pain up in this bitch and not just on black people. There needs to be some economic, social, political pain. In fact, if I can make any contribution to the uh, canon of thought among black people is that traitors are punished and enemies are checked. And in turn, traitors to us must be punished. Black people who betray us, we can't like them anymore. If you're related to Martin Luther King and you're selling us out, in my view, your ass should have been on the balcony and he should have like ducked, right? You should have been in the room with Fred Clark. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark Clark and, and Fred Hampton. And, and <laughs> see what I'm saying? We, If you betray us, and, and I'm telling you, we've got an incredible group of people that you know are super complex and difficult and problematic but i'll tell you one thing that we don't do is we don't look at other people that are hated and sometimes they're hated for good reason now i'm not saying which group is but jews i'm, I'm gonna keep talking about jews jewish people know how to hurt people even when they're outnumbered we are more than enough people to punish anybody in the world that doesn't like us if we wish to. And that's part of why we need a correction, because Negroes are great at slaughtering one another. We'll get worked up over this broad that got blown away doing something stupid in Florida. And yet uh, I can see my feed, the brother who's constantly sending me stuff about one man after the other killing the mother of his child, a woman, black woman killing their children, baking their children, burning their children, poisoning their children, and not a fucking whimper from anybody. And in particular, not a damn peep from sisters when it's sisters killing each other and gay relationships. Oh yes, yeah, stud wars is real all the way live. Sisters shooting each other in the head in broad daylight, kill, killing the children of their ex-girlfriends, shooting up the houses of their girlfriends with AR-15s. Real talk. And we don't, we don't deal with this. If we show this kind of division and hate for one another, and the biggest cancer in our community is black self-hatred, it's not cancer of the rectum, cancer of the prepuce of the penis or the throat or the of the lungs 
or the pancreas. It's a cancer that we hate God for making us who we are. And that thing needs to go. And in fact, not only does the cancer need to go, we need to have an enforcement body. Let me just remind people, Martin Luther King, who came north talking all of that lofty shit that wasn't relevant, when he got to Harlem, Malcolm X, oh yes he did, had people from Temple Number 7 pelt Martin Luther King with eggs in Harlem. Mm -hmm. Yes, Martin Luther King got a damn lesson, nigga. You're not going to half step up in here. When he came to Chicago, when he came to Chicago, he said that Chicago was the worst city he ever went to. Because yeah. white folks here, they tell you where it was. See, that's the beauty. That's the beauty of Yeah, but, see, but, but, but the black people jumped in Martin Luther King's shit. Yeah. And we didn't jump in Obama's shit, although he would have probably liked it. It was, thank you very much. <laughs> right. But um, we have to bring pain to traitors, to defeatists, to liars. Clyburn should be on in an ICU unit somewhere because he's been worn out. What's you need more than Marcel down there raising hell with him. I mean, Clyburn should be... People should be cussing out pastors that let that old Negro spiritual come in and lie uh, election time in their church. Um, when black people were chained up as chattel property, they resisted white supremacy more 160 years ago than what our asses are doing right now. See, it's a goddamn shame. That, that's because that's that's the, that's the fault. That's the fault of many people in a sense. One of one of the problems is is that. I became I became black power because I studied, I respected my culture. Many people today, they don't respect their culture. They don't respect their history. And as a result, how can you move forward? They don't respect their sex. That's right. But see, but that's not that's not the main problem. The main problem is that we are traditionally a very tribal people. And because we are tribal people in a sense, we always run into some sort of tribe. That's one of the reasons why, why in the past we had the Africans. African tribes fighting each other. Over here, we had the black Indians fighting each other. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we have? You know, Afro Lady, he's uh, he up in this area. I don't know if he grew up in Chicago, but I know he heard about the, the Black Stone Rangers, the Black Disciples, the Vice Lords. See, they're all tribalistic. They're all trying to maintain control over their territory. And see, until white, until black people can understand that we're 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 a unique people because we're foundational black Americans. And because we have a lineal descent from our African and our Black Indian ancestors. But at the same time, we have to, in a sense, get more grassroots. People do not want to deal with the grassroots. I'm a grassroots historian. Mm -hmm. right? I published over 40 books. Reverend, uh, uh, Dr. Matthews here published three, four books and, and articles. Yeah, we're, we're, but we're grassroots. Mm -hmm. we and, and, and I don't want to be anything other than what I am. You get me? So uh, I, I'll tell anybody my heritage. I have a bunch of European heritage, a lot, maybe a third. Um, I, and I'm glad over the years I've gotten darker. Oh, it was rough being light skinned in public schools here in DC. And I'm not one of the little nasty people about it. Uh, but anyway, um, we should like who and what we are. Slavery to me isn't a disgrace. Being slave-minded and acquiescing to slavery is a disgrace. Yeah, because see, the whole point is this: is that when you when you when you when you understand your history, you want you want in a sense catch cage. You want to become culturally, mm. you know, acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Because see, when you catch mm. cage, you become you lose your immunity to whiteness. That's mm -hmm. why you find a lot of these black people, like Oprah Winfrey, uh, Tyler Perry, some of these other these other middle class people, uh, mm. you know, Greg Carr, you know, Karen Hunter. These people, in a sense, they're bougie oriented because the fact is that they talk black power, they talk black love, but they're really, in a sense, assimilationists. They really want to be respected and 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 showered with praise. And, and and they will actually they want to be patted on the ass and groped on the dick no. by Hitler and and by David Duke. 
uh, or or uh, somebody like Gloria Allred, the, the bitch that keeps harassing my cousin Bill Cosby. Yeah. I mean, and it's in fact, it's a goddamn disgrace that black folks won't say stop fucking with Bill Cosby. Mm. Uh, it's, he, it's, he, some, it's some black people that are saying that, but, the but not is, enough. The I mean, point. come on. I mean, I mean, you don't hear no Negroes crying about Epstein. They sacrificed black kids down there. They raped and killed and of ate course. black girls. And, and people like Chris Tucker's bitch ass was down there. Yeah. And it's Jay-Z and right. them are down there and they're going to act. If Bill Cosby did screw all those women, and of course a bunch of them wanted it, it's their business, well, frankly. Okay. But some yeah, of those yeah, women yeah. were so ugly. If Bill Cosby's like the other men in my family, we don't like ugly. Some of those yeah. uglies, they're like the black jelly oh, beans that you throw away when you're out. You, t- you take them out the bag and leave them. I mean, and so I don't believe that the ugliest of the women in that group, I don't believe that. So take the ugly women out of the larger 40 and maybe Bill messed with those. Well, see, this, this is a problem. You got under you got to understand is that that the only thing we the media media plays the role. Remember, it was the media. It was the media that encouraged my uh, my parents and other black people to migrate from the south up to the north. That was the Daily Defender, the Philadelphia uh, the Philadelphia uh, papers. You're it's talking the, about it's it's not it's the Pittsburgh Courier, what you're making reference and so to. Then, and so then the thing is this though, is that we like the only thing we we like in a sense a media. The only, the only three, the only three medias that we got today is what? Tariq Nasheed, Professor Black, the Black Authority, and because of the fact that we lack, see, see, when I when I was growing up, we had the, we had the Journal of Black Studies, we had uh, we had Black Scholar, we had uh, we had so many. You had Freedom people. Ways. Freedom you ways. had the Black World. You right. had a bunch of things. And, and see, today we have nothing. Look at all these so-called black professors at these universities, these kiss-ass professors. They're not doing shit. See, when white folks, when white folks, they start magazines, they start historical studies, they do research on themselves. Look, look at this, look at this. You know you, what about the root? Those punk ass niggas at the root, yeah. they're all this scum. They're, they're you not, know, the next the mm-hmm. next the next time an AIDS epidemic comes along, they're not gonna have no staff left. You know, see, see. The, the, those people, and you already talked about them, those people are playing a joke on us. Those people are doing, the, those people, those folks, you know what I'm talking about, just like they played a trick on Ice Ice Cube, Ice-T, and the resident brother, Nate, they said they going to kill the police. And then, and so those people, they wanted to play a joke on them. And so they, they let them go in the movies. They let their records make money. You know, the gangster, you know, the gangster rappers from uh, from California. And then just to show them that they were nothing but liars. See, the root, the root ebony, the editors of these magazines, see those folks, they real funny. Now the now that now our black old black media is owned by those folks. And who do they have running it? They have immigrants running it. And, and, and you know what? And in essence, we gotta talk about that. You know, they had the little stud and they're running it. And essence was filth. I mean, I hope it's gone out of business. It hasn't, it hasn't. Still on the line. Oh, I mean, well, you know what? Um, <laughs> let me tell you, they should call the root the cooch because they just <laughs> bent all over, man. Uh, it's just disgusting. But, but you know, and, and so then, because those, because those folks that dominate now, see, see, we had we had to take control. You had to be brave. See, that's what that's what that's what uh, Doctor Short is telling you. Doctor Short is trying to tell you. He's trying to tell us. That we had to be strong, we had to be ready to fight. We had to call out those things that are injustice. We had to call out those people. See, see the black church. The black church can never really be the black church can never really be a center of, of, of black hope and black black prosperity. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because to be a good minister in the black church, you had to you had to ignore all these women in the church who was having babies out of wedlock. See. You had if you be, no, you got to ignore the issues of the people that are paying your salary. Right. You have to deal with the city. Look, the black church is uh, a brothel full of sellout pedophile demons. And I'm a Christian. I Last time in church, in fact, I was at my uh, my great uncle's church and the 
broad hat on a witch hat. I can send that shit to you. She had a hat. It looked like a Halloween see. costume. Only difference was, picture. huh? I want to see that picture. No, you, well, <laughs> you know what, Afro lead. I'm gonna send you the picture. Okay, you can send it to me. I'll pull it up. I'll put it up the second you send let it me, to me. Let me see. You know what? I put that picture up on my Twitter page. Can you go to my Twitter page, the salt page, because I don't have that thing in front of me. Um, but she has on a purple hat with a buckle on the front. You know the witch hats? Remember Sabrina, yeah. the teenage witch? Uh -huh. The buckle on the front of the hat, it's purple. She had a white dress with that this, but the sleeves hanging off. Had the dress been black and the hat been black, she would have been dressed just like a witch. I was like, what the? F you know, I was clowning that shit sitting next to my aunt, <laughs> making fun, you know, of this thing. You know, this is ridiculous. But worse than that, um, my cousin that goes to that church is named Matthew Fogg. Look him up. Matthew Fogg is one of the foremost advocates for police reform for ending racism and the uh, and police you got a crime epidemic where this church is and my other asshole cousin would never think because he's stupid as fuck to have this brilliant family member of his do something around law enforcement and crime. This is, he travels the world. He's right there. You just want an, someone to fill a seat like a movie theater, except they don't serve popcorn in church. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's backwards. Uh, people treat the church as basically, it's, it's, well, you could call it a, a brothel that's kept in the family or a dental practice or a medical practice or a chiropractic office or an architectural firm where it's passed from person to person to person as a private business instead of something to serve people and point people to being holy, to respecting one another, to loving themselves. In fact, a lot of whole, let me finish, the churches participate now in genocide when they pushed this goddamn uh, jab. And so they've killed off their best customers. In fact, the churches are a lot like the gay movement. They kill off their best people. <laughs> they do it with STDs and the church does it with bullshit. Wow. That's the that's that's problem. Or cigarette companies kill off their best customers and liquor co uh, company and drug dealers. And so that to keep getting new people because you fuck over. And, and what's really bad is when the church pushed these jabs, the old niggas that know they're going to die and they're afraid they're going to go to hell because they live really bad. So they're like big tippers to Jesus. They kill a whole demographic of their biggest payers off. I mean, their biggest customers they've wiped out. And the young people, Afro elites age, you know, Afro wonder, they ain't trying to give 10% of their money to some fat nigga with a pack of hot dogs worth the hog meat on the back of their head looking at their woman. You're not going to give them 10% of anything but an ass whooping. He can get more than 10%. <laughs> right. Well, in fact, you know, that's on the house. You know, and, and so then, so you see, it, it's just like it's just this is it. We 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 we've turned away from creativity. You know, hip hop. Those people bought hip hop. Now here, hip hop has nothing to do with our culture. You see, the only the only innovation. Remember, to to really have a movement, to really in a sense have a black self correction, you have to be ready in a sense to do things that are unique. See, in the, right. past, in the past when we had our jazz musicians, the jazz musicians, they would never stick to the script. They had to, they were, they were always trying to be creative. And that's they, right. Even when they were on dope, they were creative. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's why I call this stuff dick hop because all it's promoted is deviance. Yeah. Dick hop. Yeah, and, and that's what those folks do. Nothing hip about what y'all bitches on. Yeah, and see, that's what those folks do and see, See, we have we have to have to have self correction. You got to have a cultural movement mm -hmm. and, and, and mumble and, rap. I mean, what's the inspiration that you got someone's cooch in your mouth where people can't understand? What you're doing? You're you're I mean, it's so it's so disgusting. It's disgusting, y'all. It's disgusting. It is. And that mumble rap, that mumble rap is really in a sense. Remember, that's just that's just those folks making a joke out of us, just like they made just out of, just how they they made a joke out of in a sense. 
you know the uh those black the uh, so-called gangster rappers from california mm -hmm. now they're playing with the black media you see they always they're playing with us they're playing with us and that and that's mm -hmm. why it's so important that's why it's so important for people to listen to professor black listen to afro elite mm -hmm. you know listen in a sense to, to read this and, and, and fact, let's pause this for a second. How many people have liked this show? Y'all need to make the damn like on this thing ring. It needs to ring like a cash, an Asian store cash register with Negroes hate themselves in the neighborhood because we'd be buying from there. Make it ring. Make it um, ring. And, and he's got 6,100 followers. He needs to have 11,000. Who's going to subscribe today? I want everybody on here take one second let's do a goddamn commercial let's do a commercial because we all need something uh clyde dr clyde winter has 40 books up on amazon they're decently priced he's not like some of these other afrocentric fake ass niggas whose books cost like a hundred dollars and they're paperback and it's about 50 pages long his shit is so thick you could build a house foundation on it okay so Dr. Clyde Winters has a lot of books on all kinds of topics all over the world. Linguistics, architecture, uh, history in America, history in Asia, history in Europe, uh, ancient history, history in, in Mesoamerica. That's Dr. Clyde Winters. Look him up. I only have two books, although I have four manuscripts. I also, Randy Short has two books that you can get through Amazon. Slavery's Mastery and uh, Spartacus. Let me pull it out. For all of you that want to know about a fake ass Negro that's in politics, this bitch ass Cory Booker, that this nigga's gonna run for president maybe in eight years. May as well find out. He's posturing himself, positioning himself so he can run. He's in the Senate. I mean, and uh, just, yeah, definitely. You want to find out what a no good Negro he is? Here's the book. By the book. He's no damn good. Book. And then I want to say to you, um, I am president of BACPAC. BACPAC stands for the Black American Constitutional Political Action Committee. We aim to fill in the gap where just a handful of people. But let me just say to you, things that we're working on right now, we're trying to create a way to get funding for three film projects. This is just one of the things. One of the film projects, if it should work for DC, we're going to be able to hire like 100 people, even if it's for a few months. That's a few months someone isn't homeless. That's a few months someone doesn't need SNAP, although SNAP is beautiful. I love it. I mean, that's what I said. when my card, if my card had a hole in it, it would have been pregnant by now. <laughs> Look, <laughs> backpack, it's B-A-C... B A C P A C dot info. Look us up. I have a GoFundMe. We, we right now we have a pre-drive. Our pre-drive is to raise fifteen thousand dollars. Thus far, we've raised uh, one. Actually, we've raised. I haven't put everything in. We've raised thirteen hundred dollars. So it just under ten percent of our original drive. But I want to tell you, if you like the fact that people. And Uganda is saying no to LGBTQ. You are looking at the face of a person who paid for the computer for some of that legislation to be done. Uh, we put all together, a, a handful of us, we put in about $1,500 into grassroots activism in East Africa to fight against Biden and Blinken's filthy ass. Oh, yes, we most certainly did. Uh, and, and it's not like I'm rich. And so, I, I mean, I'm paying out of pocket. And so if you wonder why a lot of foreigners talk to me, we do what we can do right now. That means Black Americans help Ugandans stand up to the State Department because you're looking at one of them. And I want to say something else. We're going to forge an alliance to fight against in Pride Month. That's why we passed it this month. We're going to forge an alliance to fight against this crap in school because we're tired of black children being targeted anywhere in the world. But of course, mm -hmm. there's no place like home sweet home. That's one thing that Backpack did. And we have a book. We have a book that's going to show that the U.S. government, along with the European Union, is trying to force 
LGBTQ and eugenics to destroy Africa so they can control it. And it matters because if they'll kill blacks there, they'll kill them everywhere. It's up to you. So look, so Backpack is there. I've got a GoFundMe. You can follow me. I'm Randy Short at, uh, on, on Facebook. I'm Randy Lancaster Short on Facebook. I've got Instagram pages. So all you have to do is Google me. You can find me. But I need, and you know, these, uh, I'm almost done, Brother Afro Lee. No, I need you, some, you, I need you, some, you, M I need some MFM, which stands for motherfucking money. That's the grassroots way of saying reparations. Pretty soon, we're going to have MFM shirts, hats, and a range of other things. I also want to say to you that Backpack is working to fight human trafficking starting in Mississippi. We've launched the Innocence Project. We're working with another group of grassroots activists in Georgia to fight against blacks being incarcerated without a trial. And mm -hmm. as we find people, we put a proposal to people who've had children murdered. Um, sometimes people run away. There's a lot of cowardice. A lot more could happen if more people stood up. I want to give backpack a uh, pat on the back that when brother uh, Logan down in Houston was trying to get the death certificate within a week of us raising hell on the phones, the death certificate after months appeared. We, 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 we're going to be about the business. It's a handful, but our big thing that we want, the most important thing is that we want to take down the color slurp rule. Slurples is our new word for this uh, pork chop feminist homoeroticism. We're tired of slurple. I mean, it's not new. People were munching in Cleopatra's time. I mean, it's not new. I'm tired of it. Why can't Oprah Winfrey's bloated orca looking ass make a movie about a black man and wo woman that love each other? My father and mother loved each other, screwed and had two kids. They met, and met when they were in junior high school and they, they never were apart. I know lots of people, their love stories. Oprah Winfrey claims to give a goddamn about black women. Why do all the women have to be raped, abused, or hurt? Why can't a black woman be happy? Why can't a black woman get some regular loving, compassionate dick? Why can't a black woman have a man that wants to make it rain on her? Why does it always have to be this negative shit? So we're after Oprah. You know, it's like David and Goliath. Well, Oprah's bigger than Goliath as far as I'm concerned compared to me. I'm going to knock that bitch in the head with an economic rock. I want people to boycott her and her stupid ass friend, Mel King, and that uh, <laughs> her beard, uh, Stedman. Come on. He's got more pocketbooks than Beyonce. Y'all know that shit's not real. We need to stop her. The color purple was ridiculous the first time. You need to know when it's rebooted, it's going to celebrate pedophilia, incest, and LGBTQ lesbianism. Mm. We don't need any more films. We need some love. With all these girls that are getting their titties cut off and they think they're boys, how many girls are going to want to be shook or want to or, or want to be mister because some of them are too ugly to be shook? Open them need to be held accountable. They are giving her this money to hurt us. We're going to fight them. We're going to go all the way to Warner Brothers. We're going to be in the boardroom. We're going to go to the stockbrokers meeting. I'm going to fuck Oprah up. I swear to bitch, I'm going to light you up, nigga. I got you. I mean, I've been waiting for a long time to do something to you. I mean, and I'm going to do it now. I'm Virtually. tired of this shit. I, no, 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 she needs to get shut down. We need people to not go to the theaters. We need for them to spend $100 million to make this stupid-ass film and for it to do like Beloved. Beloved cost $80 million and it made less than $24. Woman it King. Was a, it was, um, Stud King, stuff. all of this. Thing. This is the third Stud movie in a row. You had Stud right. King, Stud Conda, and now you have the color Slurple. Right. Why can't there be three movies where black men and women, at least a movie where a dick and a pussy like each other? Because I think a lot of dicks like yeah, pussy, I feel, no matter what people say. That's why, that's why Emancipation was, that was made by Will Smith. Emancipation is the only love story that I've ever seen between a black man and a black woman. In Emancipation, you know, the character about Will Smith, in the beginning of the film, he tells his wife, 
you know, they're going they're selling them the, the work for the uh to help the Confederates to build up their uh their uh their industry. When when they go to the plantation, they show how the real plantation was. They show all these heads of black people on the pole. Most black people don't even know that at, at every plantation down south, they either had a nigga on the pole or they had heads. They had the heads of black people hanging. So anyway, and, 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 and they mess people. This is we we're going to push for that, but we're not just going to fight against what Oprah does because we're not reactive. The motto of backpack is we lead with solutions. So we don't like what Oprah's doing. So as it's I'm speaking, movie. my colleague that knows people, we're trying to get help three different groups of black people make films. And we're talking about trying to get a minimum of several million dollars per person. And one person we're looking at trying to get 50 million. I don't have that much money. That's why you see me out here begging. But if we can get that, uh, you won't see me begging. You know, Afro Elite. Uh, you know, we, you, you, you'll come. You'll be able to partner with our network, and that's what we're trying to do. I also want to let you know that Backpack is pushing a forthcoming radio show. I'm just waiting for uh, my colleague, Sister Sean, there in D.C. Hey, how you doing, Sister Sean? The radical, my cousin too, my angry cousin. That means she's angrier than me. I have to calm her down. I mean, <laughs> she, I mean, I'm like ice water compared to she's like, you know, um, a cappuccino while it's still in the damn machine before you put the cream models out. So anyway, it's going to be called the short report. So I'm letting people know, but we absolutely need resources. I also want to praise all those people that have given to uh, Brother Afro Elite. He has a GoFundMe. I mean, you've raised a couple of thousand. You need more. He needs money. Like and share this channel while I'm doing this goddamn commercial. Yeah. Uh, See, and of the course, more money, the more money I probably gets, the better show. The, show the, bet, the it, bet, better it'll be. Indeed. And, 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 and make it make it much much more. Uh, much and, 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 more and, and make it rain. My cash right. app is W. I'm sorry, is Doctor Randy Short. Doctor D R R A N D Y S H O R T. Dr. Randy Short with the dollar sign in front of it or Zellin PayPal, which is wrandyshort at gmail.com. I absolutely, in fact, I'm going to keep asking y'all for money. You know why? The people that betray us are paid by people to betray you. The reason I talk the way I do about black issues is the people that give me MFM, my motherfucking money comes from black people. The grassroots. The, so, so you know, you, you you guys pay me the money that I have. I mean, if I mean I have other jobs, but a lot of myself it comes from black people. Therefore, people say hey, you you're not afraid. No, I'm not afraid because the people help me. So you know, uh, I have put both of your cash apps in the chat room. Yes. So keep them up there. If 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 your phone start blowing up, you know what I'm saying. I want you to know that's because the people listening right now live, that's because they're watching and they they blessing, you know, the... Uh, and I want to offer you on air, there is a movie that's proposed, I'm waiting for treatment. Uh, I They wanted someone to be a radio or TV announcer. Uh, would you consider being in a movie that it's going to be based on something similar to Meteor Man, but a different city, not just Chicago? Would you be an announcer? I'm asking you. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I, you have the, you know, and, and <laughs> the only thing we may do is, no, no, we would put you in the Afrocentric clothing. Because I was thinking to have um, no, 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 none of that Afrocentric shit. Okay, you well, wanna, now, let wanna, me just say to let wanna, me just say that, brother no, no, Afro. No. I was no, thinking no, about no. the scene and you the movie. On, you gotta have on white gym shoes, mm -hmm. and you gotta wear a hoodie with a tie. Okay, because I was thinking be with a tie. I, I, we got to start with, a new tradition. I've I've got to do start some a new tradition, man. A I've got to do. And I've got to do a Bulls baseball, a Bulls I, baseball cap. Jeez. I, I, I was thinking as I was watching you because I know I've been asked to add some stuff to the script. And I was thinking, I know you're not going to like this, but, you know, you, you have the nickname. But we were thinking of a scene 
of uh, a baby in a militant black home, and the baby's just in the, <laughs> the baby's just saying some shit because it's mad, and the superhero touches the baby, and the baby comes out as you. Because nobody can understand what the baby's saying. And once the baby is big, like you start saying all this angry black shit. <laughs> 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 this thing. It's just, and it's just, how did you learn all that? <laughs> and you say, the internet. <laughs> so anyway, I'm, I'm just thinking it's going to be a comedy film. And we've got to use, in fact, the war that we must wage is in the area of culture. So we're going to look to find new black musicians that don't make trash music. Although, you know, I do. I mean, I'm going to do silly stuff. It's going to be funny. OK, it's the same way I put up on Facebook. Uh, commies are red. Republicans are blue. <laughs> they just help gays and illegals and they fuck over you. And see, <laughs> I mean, I could do a rap like this. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I just told the a, truth, we're right? A nice beat. I know some people who make some good beats. I know. Well, some yes, people yes, who no, just the, absolute. We we need to be in cooperation for stuff because we've got ideas, and it's going to happen. Um, I know that we need something on the East Coast, and I'm very proud of my cousin, who's an actor and a comedian. And a lot of people don't know, but and I'm not trying to boast or anything, but I I think if I can get this pulled off, I'm going to end up in the movie business. Not so much acting, although I am going to act a little bit because I think I can be a fool. And what I would like to at least one thing I'd like to do is be a drunk in the film because you can say whatever you want when you're drunk. <laughs> and I also want to play... To piss off people, I want to play some LGBTQ characters that are really, really ridiculous because we used to laugh at that shit. Now we take it seriously. For example, I was just talking to someone about a bar scene and uh, the guy is uh, the gay bartender who has a twin and, you know, and you know, what the, <laughs> and, the, and the, the, you know, the bartender is trying to push up to the dude at the bar. And it says, it seems like you're having a hard day. And he says, I noticed you used the word hard. He says, well, it's a good word. He says, not coming from you. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I'm just thinking about the dialogue. And then the guy says, um, well, is there anything I can help you with? He says, aside from a drink, no. And, and the guy says, you seem to be having a lot of problems. He says, well, uh, yeah, I'm having pussy problems. And the gay dude says, I don't touch the stuff. <laughs> That's funny. You see the dialogue. I know people are going to be this dying because I'm going to do a dialogue. People could be outraged. Hey, but they'll be laughing. Hmm? The interviews would be crazy through the roof. Uh, oh, no, no. We, no, we're going to do it. Look, there, you know, and uh, if I can get Brother Dewan, oh, shit. We, we're going to create, we're going to do some crazy, because we got to get niggas laughing again. A lot of people don't understand. Um, and I I absolutely did not want to be a comedian. I don't want to be a comedian, although I think I'm very funny. I, I, you, you're I know always cracking the chat, I, chat room up. They always. Yeah, but, I, well, yeah, I, 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 I don't mind. Dick Gregory was an activist as much as he was a comedian. But you know, uh, Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory wasn't ups Dick Gregory didn't run after laughs. Dick Gregory understood the culture to make you laugh. But you know, I, I know this like to be around Dick Gregory. He just talked. Dick Gregory would make you laugh talking about ordinary stuff. He didn't like sit up and try to make drug jokes and race jokes and sex jokes. He didn't have to do that. He could just talk to you and bring the sardonic, the ironic, <laughs> right? He could bring all that to it at one time, point out the contradictions, do all this stuff and tell the story, make you laugh. OK, um, we don't have since Richard Pryor and Dick Gregory died, we don't have any of that anymore. It's sad. We've got to bring that tradition back because there is a part of resistance that comes with humor. OK, I would get fired from jobs because I would make people uh laugh at the teacher like you know i was i'm gonna just tell you i had a 
conversation I was blessed to speak to the the wonderful, the only actor I halfway respect, well, actually I do respect, and that's Isaiah Washington, who made the film Corsicana. Everybody should see it. It's a great film. <clears throat> and and he he can change Black people need a Cecil B. DeMille. I think he's got the best shot of being that. Uh, but I learned he went to Howard University and he mentioned a teacher. I didn't know we had the same teacher at Howard. So I began to say something I know he would hear from him. And I said to him, uh, what's his name? Um, Isaiah, brother, you need to come to class, man. I can't pass you if you don't show up. I don't know what it's with you, yo, young black American guys. You don't want to do your work, but you want all A's. It's like wanting a woman, but you don't want to take her out to eat, man. Now, I mean, I think you should show some respect to what you're going to do with your life. Are you listening to me, brother? And don't you think you're going to run off to Hollywood and be a big star? You're going to get played. You're going to be a bigger prostitute than the hoes on 14th Street, brother. Have you listened to me? That is how he sounds. <laughs> I've been that's, trying not to crack up, but sometimes it is hard. That's Haile Garima, the maker of the film Sankofa. I know you know about that film, Dr. Winters. You've yeah. seen Sankofa, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I saw it uh, over the summer. Yeah, okay. So all I have to do is, well, brother, you saw the film, but did you buy it? Or did you get a, a pirated uh, VHS? So what did you do, brother? Did you cheat us? We're here yeah, standing up for our yes, culture. You're standing up for our culture, brother. Your brother, I see, did. this is why we I can't did. get anywhere. You know what? If I was the only person making guns for black liberation, you would try to get a toy store gun. You wouldn't even want to fight for your own freedom, brother. No, anyway. No, so, I would give me I would give me some I would give me some wood. I'd go and file a pipe, and I'd buy me some bullets and make me a zip gun. Yes, sir. In, yes, in, sir. Anyway, I, uh, I would talk like guns when I was in high school, Captain. I would talk. I would talk like my uh, teachers, or, or make fun, or get fired at jobs because you'd make fun, especially if you had an asshole boss, and you just make talk like them until people didn't respect the person anymore, and they realized they had a good workforce until I got there. Then people would laugh in their face when they start talking, and they figure out it's you, <laughs> and I get fired. It's not that I didn't do my work; I'd come on time, but I'd just make fun of the person, laugh at them. Have people laugh. We need to learn how to laugh yes, at white supremacy. It's a fucking yes, lie. We need to laugh at self-hating black people. We need to laugh at wannabe uh, tethers to white supremacy, these damn uh, illegals and others. We need to laugh at a man who wants to piss in a woman's restroom and goes in looking for urinals in a woman's restroom. That's a fucking joke. And we, we need to laugh at people thinking that there's American exceptionalism, that they're not going to give us our MFM and that they're going to be able to run this game another four or five hundred years because the days of this country are numbered. The days of white supremacy kicking us around is numbered. The days of the boule, the days of the sellout, the defeatists, the pork chop feminists, the black necks, the fagonists, the simps, the brother fuckers. Speaking of that, uh, Backpack has uh, the People's Report, which will be a weekly news magazine with opinions and editorials. And I have two podcasts, one called Brotherfucker Diaries. I'll be talking about the no good black men that castrate, stab black men and women in the back from both historical perspectives as well as my personal and also penis monologue, which is our response in lieu of the loss of our great ancestor, our holy prophet, Kevin Samuels, the penis monologues will show that feminism will be destroyed in the black community in my lifetime. Amen. So now can we talk, we need to punish traitors. We need to go to war. We need to declare war. 
In fact, uh, brother, uh, you know, Dr. Winters, the Black Panthers used to make Black businessmen and churches do stuff in the community. A lot of the shit you see bushy people doing, they were made to do that. The grassroots made those niggas do it. Do you really, have you been to Africa? If we do have any African ancestry, because I know those aboriginal Negroes out there who claim no African ancestry. And then you have the scam Africanists who claim that there's no aboriginal or European strain either. All assholes. <laughs> anyway. Do you really think when you go to Africa, if we have any connection to Africa, you know Africans are the rich they drive by the broke ass Africans and they don't care a fuck. They can have a fifty million dollar house and people are living, I mean, living in shit, and they don't care. They can have water pumped in, water flown in from Europe and shit. And the people right next door are drinking water with shit in it. But you know, not only that, but a lot of people don't know that in many African countries, you know, just like if you drive in, in, in the Midwest and you see deers on the road. In many African countries, that's what they do. They run over. They run over. They run over other Africans and leave them on the damn highway in the road like a damn deer. You didn't know that, did you? No, right. I didn't. Yeah. At least I'm new. What they think. What they think about life. If you ain't got no money, ain't ish. Right, and they don't give a damn about anybody, and they don't give a damn. Look, you know what you do in Africa when your car breaks? You leave it on the side of the road and get another brand new one. You don't get the shit repaired. <laughs> That's for broke people. The rich, you'll, you'll, you'll drive around Africa, you'll see like Mercedes and shit on the side of the road. They fucking, you know, so, and people strip the parts off. It, it, most people have not been to Africa or if they go, they go to the tourist areas. You need to go where the people are. When I go abroad, I go into the hood. Until this area I lived in got gentrified, I lived in the hood. I mean, I just, I mean, I've lived in the hood most of my life. Um, when I go to Africa, I'm not trying to be with the rich people. When I go to the Caribbean, I'm not trying to be with the rich people. I, that's not who I am here. Why would I be that anywhere else? But a lot of Negroes travel and they fake like they're in the ruling class and everyone laughs at them because everybody knows that black people don't run America. In fact, black people don't even run their own genitalia anymore. I mean, it's, mm. we, I don't know what we run except for we run each other into the grave. And, and part of what we also have to do, part of getting on code is that niggas have to stop being takers. There's one thing that I find repellent in Africans, Caribbeans, and other black people in the world is that they always had their fucking hand out. They had their hand out more than a blind motherfucker with a bowl. <clears throat> they never think about what they're gonna give or what they can share. Okay, in fact, I know prostitutes whose hands are out less than foreign Negroes. They're takers, they're parasites, a lot of them. And a lot of us the same way. We only think about what someone's going to give them instead of what we can build, what we can share. You meet a black family, the mother and father work hard as shit, get property and shit, and the fucking sorry ass kids want to blow all the money and shit, have crack houses, bring in white women and dogs and shit and sell off everything for a fraction of its cost and then get mad. Well, you know, mom and dad, we were raised good. We had a good upbringing. We had a good, I had a nice childhood. I, we, our Christmases were always good. Then this nigga's under a bridge somewhere with the white woman with hair more matted than the shag, shaggy D.A. Disney movie. Oh, wow. Um, we, we've got these people that are takers. I mean, it's grifters. It's like holes with kids by 10 different men thinking that um, somebody from a, a, a millionaire is going to marry their ass. I mean, what? You know what? If you marry a bitch with 10 kids, that million dollars is going to disappear real fast, especially if they're all junkies, especially if all of them need sex changes because they're confusion, confused. In fact, if a couple of them need sex changes, you wouldn't be a millionaire. No one's going to just give people shit. And and people can't think that they're going to just take. Are, are you understanding me? Just take, 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 take. I'm talking about this brother fucker, black self-hatred culture that doesn't share, that doesn't love. It's like the sister that you could take out 10 times and they wouldn't hold your hand. Or the people that you're nice to. Don't you have family members? They only call your ass when they have a financial problem. I tell them, you know what? An ATM machine has dibold. 
I don't have Dabo written on me. Please hang the fuck up. Thank you. <laughs> right? I mean, I don't know. Shit, I don't know you. Shit, the credit bureau doesn't know you. Why should I? Right? These people only call you when they need something. Or you've got these relatives that just have to be on drugs every day of their life. I mean, every day with reefer sweeter than the day before. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then when they run out of reefer money or they're in jail and they only show up when there's a crisis and you have to give them money right then and there. And it's got to be a large amount. And they always ask for loans and shit. And let me tell you something. Um, <laughs> um, the day that they pay their loan back is the day that Kamala Harris doesn't have her feet in the air. And that's never going to happen. OK, wow. and I'm just telling you um, that that's never going to happen. We need to get rid of this culture of grifting, pimping, using, lying, cheating, backstabbing, um, being hateful, uh, being all, you know, one, one white people to love us, but hating light skinned people or saying black is beautiful, but thinking dark skin is ugly or saying you're black and proud, but you have enough weave to be a yak in Siberia, bitch. What the fuck? We need to be consistent about some things. And in particular, we need to learn how to share. We need to think big beyond our habits like weed or sex or sports. We need to think big. In fact, I don't mind if we're tribal, if the tribe is big enough. Have you ever met people who don't want to know who their family is? But those fuckers are going to make a trip to Egypt to be around the high yellow Arabs that hate their asses, mm. who get mad every time anyone even mentions that someone was black and Kemet, even though they know it means the black land or the land of the blacks, right? Yeah. You can go to Egypt to try to meet people and reconnect, or you can become a Muslim and get rejected by the Pakistani and the Egyptian and the light skinned Muslims and Turks that don't want your ass around. But yet you don't even know your own kin, your own family. I was talking to a woman today, and her last name's Roundtree. There are two Roundtree families. There's one in Georgia, there's one in North Carolina. The one in North Carolina is mine. But the husband, they, they don't know. Can you imagine walking around not knowing? I mean, that's another part of it. In fact, if you don't know, you don't have the basis to even fight against what's happening to you. You know, I just learned from someone that's a distant uh, relative of mine. We have to figure out how. I didn't know I had family at Black Wall Street. Wow. That just hit me like a ton of bricks. God damn, that means they kill people there. When you really start learning about who your tribe is beyond just your immediate family or your quick extended family members, you start be feeling very differently. Like when you hear about these lakes, I used to hear about black communities being put underwater and saying, you know, that's terrible. I'm glad that never happened to any people I was connected to. And I thank whoever put that video up because my grandfather and people used to be in a place called Little Egypt and they put Little Egypt underwater. I remember looking for it on the map when I heard my grandfather mention, has anyone heard of Little Egypt? And you can't find it because the shit's underwater. That, that's something I'd never heard of. I didn't know that until this year that that happened. Uh, there's a town that my fa I have family and friends that, that they put underwater. That's why your tribe has to be bigger. You need to, and sometimes it's not so much money, but have a little bit of heart. You know, black people aren't hateful, but we could be unloving. Being unloving is the other side of hateful. Uh, I'm not going to be really nasty to you, but I'm not going to help you either. You know, being in between. You know, I'm not going to abort this nigga's baby, but I'm not going to take care of it once it's born. Mm. Right? Or I'm going to pay child support, but I'm not going to be involved in the lives of the children. Or I'm going to let him have custody, but I'm going to fight with his ass and call the cops every time he shows up. We, we have to, like, leave this stuff. And I'm going to just say it. And I know we don't agree on this thing. Niggas need to find God. We need some commandments, some covenants, some Sermon on the Mount shit that's internal. I'm not saying love your enemies. When Jesus was telling that, he was telling people to love one another because 
the enemies of the people in his time were each other. Didn't they crucify his ass? Mm. Don't you realize when he was saying, love you, <laughs> don't hate me because my point of view is different from yours around religion. And I'm not into burning sage and having tattoos and shit. Do you want to kill me? And yet a killer cop or that bitch can shoot that woman in Florida and she's going to live to be 500 years old, probably break a Guinness record. George Zimmerman is safer than a person in a Brinks truck. So we, we need to love self, love self enough to correct self, love self enough to protect self, love self enough to create institutions to imagine in particular Imagine us as a family. You get where I'm coming from. Uh, the same way this dude that told me about the shit in Tulsa, he didn't know anything about his family. He knows about the family in California. I had to talk to him about the family in Illinois, the family in Mississippi. I started telling him this shit, this is who you are, niggas. You didn't know that you had all these great people, about seven or eight black college presidents in your damn family line close into you. You didn't know that Dr. King, one of his main people, is in your family in Mississippi. You didn't know this, right? We have to know ourselves. We have to have a, a hunger for history. In fact, we need to, part of self-correction is for stupidity and ignorance to become embarrassing. It used to be if you had high water pants, remember those, uh, Dr. Winters? High water pants were in the 60s and then they went out in the 70s. If you had high water pants, everybody would sing, high waters. They would sing this. I mean, literally, you would pull the, the inseam out of your pants to try to not have high waters. If we were to make being ignorant, being stupid, being vile, dressing like you're the cheapest whore that ever lived, uh, having your pants sag off where we can see the poo juice make a line like a number one <laughs> in your drawers. If we were to make some of the most contemptible, vile, despicable behavior contemptible and use peer pressure and rejection and ostracism on such behavior, that's the beginning of moving. The white nation started with rejection of people who wouldn't get on code with the Sons of Liberty, ostracism, rejection, scorn. If you weren't for the revolution, people, I just can't like you. Um, what does remember when the guys, if they didn't know anything about black power, black history, they couldn't get any sex from the women. Remember people would walk around with Malcolm X book to be looked at by the sisters. Sisters need to raise the bar on who they'll lay down with. I remember growing up around Howard. I mean, all these dudes would walk around with books to try to get attention. Now, because we've made stupidity and ignorance so sexy, and, and, and then they make dumber ass kids. You know, you get two stupid ass people, then the kids have two sets of stupid ass genes put together, pressed down and shaken together. Damn, God damn. And then they had their own little phenotypes so they're even more fucked up than the parents. But it used to be, Smart men and women would hook up. If a, a broad was stupid but met a guy who was smart, she would get smart to get with him. If a guy wanted a lady and she was smart, he'd have to act like he's intelligent to get her attention. Now there's been a race to the bottom to be stupid. We need to change away from that culture of stupidity, nihilism, self-destruction, black self-hatred. In fact, I'm going to tell you something. Black pride comes from the boomers, younger people. Where is our movement for self-respect? Because those old niggas are ones with dentures and shit with canes that took the shot. At least they tried to feel good about who they were when they were surrounded by none of what you have. You got people who've been to Africa numbers like never before. That shit wasn't real too long ago. How did they get black pride? And what the fuck is stopping you youngsters now? I'll stop for a moment. Mm. As okay. Dr. Short, y'all, y'all, his cash app is in the um is in the chat. Come on, where you, where else you gonna get this? Y'all hook our brother up. And Dr. and, and then come on, Elder, back me up. He's not gonna use the bad language. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. Sorry. He, he's, he's you know, he's a poor man, you know. You know that and that's why the team works so well because you guys 
Y'all so dynamic. That's, that's the uh, that's the whole point. What what can I say? What can I say? They're trying to make a movie. They're trying to create. He made me start thinking about the fact is that we haven't had a good we haven't had a good a good comedy in so many years. A comedy where we could laugh and that they've always put all this all this serious issues on us. And mm-hmm. and I, and I'm really hoping our family that you guys out there will send some money to backpack so they can make this movie. They can, in a sense, begin to reinvigorate our knowledge about ourselves because, see, we need a regeneration of our culture. You know, instead of, you know, when the Japanese, when they started a film industry, what did they what did they work on? They worked on the samurai, you see? When America started their film industry, they worked on the cowboys, you see? We have, we have not began a film industry that deals with our real culture, our real thoughts, our real history. Most people have been conditioned, and they've been conditioned to feel that we've been cowards. And because they've been conditioned to feel that we're cowards, they don't understand that we're fighters. And that's what that's what Dr. Short is trying to get us to return to, to return to that, to that legacy of fighting. Do you know that there was 250 250, in a sense, slave rebellions in this country. But they tell you only about three. Then Mark Vesey, Nat Turner. Because they want you to hear about those slave rebellions in which it, in which the brother didn't win. That's- and they also don't tell you about the slave overseers. That was They had a serious occupational hazard called murder. Yes. The reason that lots of people are, yep, you could be like, uh, the dudes on Uncle Tom's cabin, you could beat some ass and find yourself killed. That's right. Do you realize certain plantations had to have black slave drivers because the white ones didn't last long? Somebody well, black would just say, I'm gonna die, but I'm gonna kill this fucker. I'm gonna kill, right. I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna slice this motherfucker. I got this big ass sigh and shit. What if I just swung this shit on <laughs> and it happened? Well, well, and in well, fact, well, a lot well, of people, a lot of people got sold. They got sold for killing. Masters, family members. One day somebody snapped. See, I'm, I'm, I, just try, I'm just trying to tell you. Poison. Uh, ever, mm. Poison. Those systems uh, go out in the field and find some plants, make some poison, put in the food. Glasses. Or even even cause the women to abort their ba- to lose okay. their babies by giving them abortion for shits and the food. Yeah. Or I go better. A whole bunch of people. Let me tell you, they had the white folks so upset. Uh, you know the answer, but we're going to ask um, we're going to ask the baby. We're going to ask Afro Wonder. Which demographic of Americans were the, had the greatest number of drug addicts just before the Civil War and up until 1900? Who was the largest group of drug addicts in America? Uh, white people? White women. Mm. White women were high all the time because they were always afraid they're going to get killed, house going to get burnt down. Negroes had them plucked in chains. You mean, if they could do that chained up, we don't have a damn excuse for what we're going through now. In the words of my dear friend, Raymond West, father Kanye West of Chicago, Illinois, slavery, my friends, is a choice, and so is suicide. And so is abortion. And we make those choices to be slaves, to suicide, or to abort. We need to stop doing that. We need to say yes to life, yes to prosperity, yes to freedom, yes to resistance, and yes to ultimate victory over anybody inside or outside around us trying to get in our goddamn way. And of course, one of the part of the victories is, of course, MFM motherfucking money we're old yep. in fact i mean i would love to hear someone over 70 say motherfucking money could you do that for me what happened Thank come you. on get it out um <laughs> stop, stop it afro stop it afro i'm sorry stop, stop it afro stop <laughs> Okay, anyway, we that's all right. Let me now talk. look. Let me talk. So look, we need black power. We got the guns down. We need more training. 
we need to do some other things. Another part of black power is taking back to the land. If you look at some of the African revolutionary logos, they would have a gun and they would have a hoe. They'd have an AK-47 and they'd have an edge or they'd have different sorts of agricultural tools. We need to produce. We need to become producers. I've got a very small yard and I could send you a picture, but I am growing collard greens, blueberries, blackberries, peaches, hmm? uh, collards, tomatoes, cucumbers. I don't have that much space. And I, I got to do some planting. I'm going to plant some Swiss chard and some leeks. We need to become serious about land, serious about growing and cultivating and making things. Look, um, it just so happens this year, because of the freaky weather, 80% of the peach crop was destroyed in South Carolina. So I haven't seen peaches in the store this whole summer. Our summer start this whole spring. And I may not see any. Or they're going to be super high prices. And it's interesting. I bought three peach trees. Um, we must begin to become creative, entrepreneurial. Stop thinking that there'll be any kind of job. Don't be a fool ass like me and have hundreds of thousands of dollars in school debt. Start thinking about controlling and, and working with not a small business, but a big business. And it's going to take people and cooperation. What is that? That's a picture of your garden. Oh, uh, okay. I'm going to zoom that that's in so people can see it. Yeah, see, that's, that's the garden that, uh, that, that Dr. Short has raised. We're going to have to go to his house. And get some yeah, of this food. We gotta get yeah some. It, let me tell you, if if it's like when you've had your own cucumbers, let me tell you, when you grow cucumbers, unlike the ones you get in the store, those cucumbers stay fresh for up to five months. You get the ones from the store, they start going bad within two weeks, decomposing. You get tomatoes if you have your own tomatoes. They have flavor. When you have your own squash, uh, I grew cantaloupe. When you have your own cantaloupes, when you have this, you have to understand the anticipation and you don't even have to be that good. Let me tell you, the collard greens were planted by the birds I feed in the backyard. They didn't like them, so they shitted them all over. <laughs> now I have collards everywhere. I'm going to have lots of greens. You don't understand that our ancestors were connected to to earth, to life, to things, the cycle. Feed a bird, love something, care about something, give a goddamn. In fact, I'm going to tell you, we got another problem that we need to work through. And that's the reason that people disrespect us. And it's, whether they understood us or not, we're not grateful. One thing I hate about Pan-Africanists is they always say, America has nothing. There's nothing in America. Fuck America, just... Never been to Africa, but just everything in America. And when they do that, this is what I despise about you fucked up Pan-Africanists. You basically said your mama, your grandmother, and all of them aren't shit. Because you're butt hurt that you see this struggle. You're not trying to be in it. So basically, you talk all this African shit to run away from doing something here. Land isn't something that can be synthesized or created. It's only what's here is what's going to be here to have. And I watch Latinos are buying land all over the South, and our people are throwing land away. Mm. Land is important. We're ungrateful, ingrates. It's, it's an abomination to not be thankful for part of the, part of the and, and gratitude is why people are buying weave. And why you need tattoos and shit. It's interesting. You know, you meet people that hate dark skin, and yet they've got tattoos darker than the skin color. I mean, because you don't like yourself. All of this, I'm not happy, and America's got nothing. If America didn't have shit in Africa's paradise, why are Africans selling family members, selling organs to come here? Drowning, being persecuted in Mexico and Chiapas and Oaxaca, trying to get here made slaves in Libya. Yes, to get here. And yet we walk around thinking we don't have nothing. 
it basically we take a shit on our ancestors. We piss on our ancestors. We vomit on them. We curse them. Do you realize when you curse where you come from, it curses you back? We got to get this curse off of us of not being thankful. You know, the stuff I learned, every, the more you learn about your family, the more you learn about what you come from, you recognize how great in spite of, because you're always going to have enemies. If you don't have, you'll have enemies. If you have, you have enemies. Part of life is adversity. Part of life is being hated. Part of life is being opposed. The people in the other groups are doing their job. It's like King of the Mountain. It's damn Hunger Games. It's up to us to have our game of survival. You see this brother here, this genius brother here, uh, Mr. Afro Elite, or as I say, Afro Wonder, Thank who you. spellbinds everybody. God damn, how did he get all this shit so fast? And I mean, I, I I'm glad he wasn't one of my teachers in school. He'd be correcting me and shit. I'd be trying to grade shit, motherfucker. Don't you embarrass me. Shit, I can fuck more of these girls this class. You can if you don't tell, right? Where did he get all this information and the motherfucker be doing it good just fast? Turn out videos and shit like the Beatles had records in the 60s. Help people that can be helped, that want to be helped, assist, support, encourage, right? We can do this. It's mind over matter. And in reality, are you? do you have the mind to be free? Mm. And the words of the uh, Yahoo, Yahusa, or Yehuda, or uh, uh, Mashiach, or AKA Jesus, and for you weak niggas, white Jesus, because you think a black Jesus wouldn't work. Okay. <laughs> he asked people, do you really want to be better? He never just said be better. He always asked, what do you want? You want this bad shit that you got or would you like something better? And if people said, I want better, like it says in Mark, according to your faith, be it unto you. If we believe and work towards better, we'll have it. Not counting on anybody else, and we can't be stupid. The problem in Black Wall Street was you knew that the Klan was in Oklahoma. You knew all this shit. Uh, machine guns were being bought by the mob because you had prohibition. Tommy guns were being used in oh, Chicago. Hey, 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 let me let me correct you there. Let me correct you. That's why they bombed them. The brothers had the brothers had a machine gun. They, they had a machine. They had a. They had, they had, I, and that's they, why they, they bombed them. That's why the, they no, bombed no, them. no, the no, the whole community should have had machine guns. Okay. And I'm saying, and they lent money to people who hated their guts. They should have invested in more machine guns. We need to be an armed camp. People may fuck with us, but we can't be an easy win. We have to stop being the bottom bitch of this oppressive system. Let somebody else be in our place. Let someone get fucked with more than us. I mean, we want to upgrade. Amen? Right. And see, in Chicago, Chicago had the lowest numbers of black people killed in a riot. And you know why? Because when they had the riot in 1919, there used to be an armory on 35th Street. And many other, many other brothers in Chicago, they had, they had been ex-military men who fought in World War I, and they went to the armory and got those guns. That's why they had to bring in the National Guard. Let, let me help you. Let me correct you. The place with the lowest number of people hurt was here in D.C., and they don't teach the history of the D.C. race riot, which was about a week and a half before Chicago. And for every black kill, three to four whites were slain. That was cool. They, 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 they don't teach that. And when the centennial happened, it wasn't mentioned in D.C. at all. It, it, was, it, it didn't happen. To the point where if you go to the National Archives, they've made the record of the D.C. race riot has disappeared. You can't find it because the black folks were doing drive by shootings. They were sniping. They were doing all kinds of stuff. And literally, the United States Army had to back down to black people in D.C. in 1919. Oh, wow. 
Okay, uh, so this uh, no, it's 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 wild, yeah. and it's so you you don't hear about it. They like Chicago. The boy getting stoned on, on, on being in Lake Michigan. That's when they start the summer. But the summer actually started in D.C. And by the way, since you're a historian, you need to know that um, uh, Carter G. Woodson nearly got shot in the head on Pennsylvania Avenue at the beginning of the race riot in July 1919. He got away just barely with his life. Um, what is you need to know is that, that way, is that why he went to Chicago? I, I, I don't know what happened, but I know he was there. He nearly got shot in the head uh, uh, just across the street from the White House. Uh, and one of the things that had happened in D.C., I want to give credit again to the heroic city of East St. Louis, the black people from East St. Louis fleeing the massacre that happened there, brought word. And so a man by the name of Brother Chase, along with uh, Nanny Helen Burroughs and others, began black people buying guns in 1917 because uh, the man, Mr. Samuel Chase, if I have his name correct, predicted that D.C. would be the next place that white people attack black people. Mm. And so black people need to be ready. Get your have guns. They're coming. But we are not going to be spared. And, we, that's why, and that's why you can't. That's why you had to support the Second Amendment. And that's why they really want to get rid of guns. See, because this is the first time in history that, that yeah, I, my father had a couple of shotguns, but this is the first time in history where black men uh, have real guns, real guns, automatic weapons. And that's why we got to be ready, because at any time it could jump off, at any time. And, and, and so, and by the way, I've been talking, you know, when we do our show, uh, we will have a segment called Praise the Lord and Pass the Ammunition. <laughs> okay. And so, you know, this gun I have, racism didn't give it to me. <laughs> racism didn't give it to me, and racism can't take it away. Amen. So just get ready. Um, come on, y'all. We need black power. But I'll tell you something. If you don't love one another, you don't respect one another, you hate all black men because some white lesbo feminists had a tongue ring that misdirected you to hate all brothers or you've been with some uh snow queen that makes you think that black women are no good or they smell like pork rinds in their drawers or whatever it is if we hate one another then those guns will be pointed at one another and use on one another senselessly and i'll tell you something when an army begins to shoot itself it emboldens their enemies we're begging to get wiped out when we refuse to come together. We're begging for it. We want, we're basically asking for suicide by race cop as a group until we change this. I'm gonna stop here. Now, Brother Afro, do we need to stop here or do you wanna go a little longer? Do people have questions? Let's talk to the room because I know we old niggas talk a lot. If, do people have questions? Folks, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if you guys have any questions at all for these two very intelligent, very empowering black men, black doctors on the uh, panel right now, please feel free to ask your question. Please, please feel free to ask your question. Checking something. Hmm. Oh, uh, and, I got and I put this up. Let me. This is we got to fight to protect our kids. Did you see these these books on pedophilia that are up on Amazon? These people are bold with this shit, and they're coming for our kids. People seem to forget in slavery, there was no such thing as pedophilia. White folks could rape all the black kids they wanted. They used to sell black children by the pound of freaks. These people are trying to go back to that. We better strap up because they're coming for our kids. They purged all the black teachers out of the schools, all the principals. There's nobody there watching those black kids in these fucking public schools. And you got all these pedophiles in there. Same way they're in the boys and girls club. These freaks are after our kids. Our kids look the best. 
and they're, you know, most tempting to filthy people. See, you mess with the wrong white kid, you know, their asses will be on a bottle of milk and shit. Or they'll be on the news. You mess with a black kid, you know, you're lucky if the family have it together. The mother's not all strung out on dick or something. I don't know where my son is. I, he come home, but I ain't see him in a week. I thought maybe he was at a friend's house. I mean, you get those kind of families, you know, all their kids could be missing. I thought they wanted to give me a Mother's Day gift by not coming home. <laughs> you know, you get this real stupid shit. Or, you know, um, or first thing, you know, my sperm is so strong, I can always have another one. And <laughs> you have a question in the chat? Yes, room. I'm ready. Comes from uh, Genesis Reset. We cannot correct our own people without going to jail. That's wrong. That's that wrong. is wrong. We That's can't wrong. Correct our people. You can correct your people. You can correct your people by, in a sense, calling out the negativities, the negative production that they're doing. You can correct. You can correct people in a sense, and you don't even have to touch them. See, see, you don't have to always just go hit somebody upside the head. You know, people in a sense can be impacted upon by, in a sense, words. Words are the most powerful thing in the universe. And you know, it's interesting. The gangs know how to, when the gangs do stuff, people are afraid, even when the gangs are completely in the wrong, to go to the authorities because there's coercion, there's a promise, a threat of violence. And whole communities where places where the uh, homicide, uh, 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 what is it? The, 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 even to determine who committed the homicide, the, clo the case closure rates are like 10, 20 percent because nobody says anything. So trust me, black people are quite used to fear. Just the good people never use fear. It's only the bad black people. So um, good black people, I think a lot of black folks think being cowardly and passive is good. It's sort of like in school when you're a black boy. You get better grades if you're quiet and they say, oh, he's so nice and he gets a good grade and he's dumb as fuck. I mean, that was my experience. The people that were just passive got good grades because they didn't give the teacher any issues. We need to understand that intelligence and goodness has been based on being servile and passive, like the people that you get in Congress or the Negroes that get the opportunities are the ones that are not assertive, they, that, are, that are castrated or they are, how can I say, uh, mastectomized. We need people who will take a risk. And I'm not talking about necessarily bust some upside the head, but you know what? If Oprah Winfrey had three, 400,000 people say, we're gonna turn the theaters out. Mm -hmm. if, if, if the theater chain dare put this movie in that denigrates black women, we're gonna, some, we're gonna punish people. We're gonna lash out. Yeah. The theater chains would not want any film by Oprah Winfrey unless you know, we they did, knew. We did that. We did that with uh, we did that with Woman King. With Woman King, you had all these Pan Africanists, Doctor Smalls, uh, you know, uh, uh, Bronson in uh, Washington D.C. supposed to be doing excavation in Egypt. They all came out supporting Woman King, but we Stud started an effort, <laughs> you know, and we started an effort in a sense, and we destroyed that movie. We made. We did. It. We didn't make any damn money. You can't it didn't make it. And we can destroy Slurple. And, and Oprah, and Winfrey, right. Oprah Winfrey needs to fall on this like she does on the sex toy she uses. We are not going to go there, Oprah. Okay. Listen. okay. Now, and and she's hope. rich enough. She, and in fact, she could take her fat ass to the islands she owns. I hope it's big enough to not sink in the ocean when she sits on it. And, uh, but leave us the hell alone. Yeah, I hope, I hope, that, uh, I hope that the family... Hope you guys will go to my uh, my YouTube page, and on my YouTube page, I discuss I discuss the effects and why we had to fight. We had to fight the cut the new color purple. We had to fight it. Go to my YouTube page, and uh, you'll see my uh, video on 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 why we had to get rid of the color purple. And because and if you go to the backpack page, I have a good article trashing Oprah Winfrey with no curse words for all you asshole bushies out there that need stuff to be in standard English. I'm bilingual, okay? But you know, you I, gotta I, sometimes call them, you gotta tell them that they got, you gotta do but, more and then let them know. That, yes. you, you've, got, you've got to shut that, bro, this down. So for all the people that wouldn't understand the 
two dollar words, I don't mind using penny words. The more people that understand this, the better. But I want everybody out there to uh, to give a thumbs up if you're going to agree to spread the word that know the Oprah, know the cover circle. No more. We can't let her be lead the anti-black male, anti-black man lynch mob. Uh, in fact, Oprah, bitch, God's trying to tell you something like cut the shit. We're tired. God's trying to tell you something right now. And we got to leave black men alone. Yes, question. We got some more questions. Go ahead. The next question comes from Jay Bad. Says to Dr. Clyde Winters, do you know how many or the percent of black people that were in the States before 1492? Their estimate, their estimates that it was in the millions. But you had to understand, in a sense, is that many of these, uh, many of these uh, 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 Aboriginal Black people here, what it was is that they were constantly, they were constantly trying, in a sense, to import things. Because see, a lot of people don't know is that before the British, before the British, in a sense, landed landed on Plymouth Rock, Jamestown, all that. What they did is that they would, you know, Black people always like gifts, and they would give the Black the Black people. Uh, the black people, in a sense, blankets, and these blankets had smallpox. You know, have, have you ever noticed that that most most uh, white, uh, most uh, European colonists, when they settled North America, they usually came in the fall. The reason they could come in the fall is that because they know it was so many empty, so many empty villages. You know, black people villages that were empty. See, black people, the black Indians, they didn't live in the Aboriginal ancestors. They didn't live in teepees. They didn't live in teepees. They built, they built in a sense, log cabins. They built castles. We even had stone pyramids, yes. There were stone pyramids. What happened is that when the Europeans, in a sense, when they built the railroads, they would go across the plains and they would tear up. They would tear up, in a sense, these pyramids made of stone. They would tear up these. And what about the ones in, in up in, I think, either Wisconsin or Minnesota and Rock Lake? They've yeah. got three stone pyramids. I don't know how they got them underwater, but they're there. Yeah, they're underwater because you know how it is. Is that it's the kind of it's the kind of a late false history. But see, it's very it's very hard in a sense to really have a real statistics. But there were many people. You got to remember in a sense that in addition in addition to the uh, the, the the native uh, the native uh, black people because see it was already black people over here before Africans came. In fact, the first black people came to Brazil 100,000 years ago. I repeat, the first black people came to Brazil 100,000 years ago. Uh -huh. people, don't even, people don't even understand is that, you know, they don't really show you a real map of Africa. Africa is only 1,300 miles. I repeat, 1,300 miles from Africa to Brazil. You see, but they, they make it look like Africa... Africa, if you look at it, sometimes they show satellites traveling over the uh, southern continent. You should look at these. It takes a long time to get over Africa because Africa is immense. It's immense. See, what is 1,200 miles? 1,200 miles is nothing. See, but that's just to show you. So, yes, there was a large percentage of black people here. In fact, in 1310, in 1310, when Abu Bakari came over here from the ancient empire of Mali in Africa. It was 25,000 brothers and sisters that came over here with them. Many people don't even know that the Aztecs, the Aztecs were Muslims and the Aztecs had mosques. See, because see, most people, they don't really read the original literature. And because they don't read the original literature, they don't know the great history we have as Aboriginal people in this country. See. They want you to always look to Africa because they always want to make you feel that you don't belong here. They want That's to make right. Feel, the scam Africanists. Right, right. And see, they want to make it feel make you feel you didn't belong here. I did um I did three I did three uh, video I did three uh, video talks on the Reverend Matthews platform that dealt with the Aboriginals, the black mm -hmm. Aboriginals, our history, our architecture, you see, our science. See, when I was growing up, my father. My father, he would always go out in Dixmoor 
and he would always rent some land and, and the, every summer we would grow crops. He grew the three sisters. And what are the three sisters? The three, the three native crops that black Indians always farm was what? Corn, Corn. beans, beans mm -hmm. and squash. And my father told me how to be a farmer, but I'm sorry, I I, 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 well, I, I, I got I got a little bit of corn. I may grow some corn, but I'm definitely gonna grow some squash. Yes, sir. And I'm gonna grow some beans. Definitely, I had beans today. See, um, what mm. kind? What kind? Well, the beans that I had today were just lentils. Oh. But I'm gonna grow peas, pole beans, and um, when it cools down, uh, snow peas. Yeah, and see that that's 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 your that's from your, that's from your Indian background. You can't help it, man. We yeah. always go back to our Aboriginal background. Any yeah. other questions? We got a couple. <laughs> Shout out to the chat room. Shout out to the chat room. Um, uh, is this a question or? Comment. Okay, that's not a question. Well, there's a super chat. We'll get to that in a, a little bit because I don't want to lose track of the questions. Let me see. Um, okay, the next one comes from Lillian Madison asking, I feel we need black vets to protect school, schools, churches, stores, and in the black community. Would you agree? Uh, no. Yes. No. No, mm -hmm. some of them are some of them are so mixed up. Some of them okay. have been some of them have been hit, hypnotized. Well, when they was in the military, so you can't trust you can't trust them. You know, like the brother down in Washington a few years ago went around shooting up people. Muhammad. Yes. See, a lot of people, a lot of people been hypnotized. You know. And, okay. Uh, and so, now, no, no. I'm going to give you a Chicago example of where the issue comes. You know that the initial Black Panther Party, all the recruits were military, including that sorry ass uh, Baphomet looking Bobby Rush. And he's military, uh, probably an agent uh, or snitch or something like that. Um, look, um, the military people, if they are, you know, in the army, you have uh, people like this dude, Austin, who's the uh, secretary of the army, who looks like uh, Esther Roll from Good Times. He's, he's a good example that this is the dude that's pushing all the LGBTQ. He's the one pushing the shots. These guys are total coons. They put this total buffoon nigga in, in hard head of the army. These folks often are white supremacy minded. I meet a lot of people that go into the military and they are for white America first and black America only after they've gotten their butts busted or they get hurt. You get where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. So, and you meet black folks, they talk about the army like it's heaven. Like they get medical care bullshit. The VA fucks over black people all the time. My God, sister in St. Louis, when I went to see her, her brother died when I was there with her. He had had shrapped on his body from a landmine explosion in the 60s that they never took out of him. He had had malaria they never treated, which meant he had had problems going back 50 years. And the VA simply studied his suffering. And only when she went there demanding answers, you find out that they had neglected him for five decades. They didn't neglect him. They were, they were studying him. You know, in my yes. and I, I said they researched him. They researched, yeah, but they basically, they, and the same thing, my great, uh, great uncle, was experimented on by the Nazis and they kept him alive to find out the impact of the Germans doing germ warfare on black GIs that they captured in December 1944 at the Battle of the Bulge. But you know, so, America was already doing it. It came out. I know, I know America's already doing it, but I'm saying that information, depending on, if you remember Boy Dead Graves, the guy who came up with the special cancer virus uh, expose, I know you know who I'm talking about. Uh, 2007, um, he claims that the Nazis, the, the U.S. government took the information that the Nazis made, uh, got from infecting black soldiers in Europe, and that's how they made AIDS. That's what he says, that Boy Dead Graves died 2009. 
It's, it's called the Special Cancer uh, Special Cancer Virus Project. Look yeah. it up. It does exist. I'm not making it up. And this is why I don't give a damn about the fake ass nigger preachers and others who told people to take this poison and it's coming out. And let me say this, all the other communities are beginning to talk about their issues with the vaccine. Notice the silence of the niggas in the church. Yes. Notice yeah. the silence of the boule. Yeah. Notice the silence with Jamie yeah. Foxx's ass has been felled by this shit. Yes. Look at all the people dying and you don't hear anything from the goddamn boule, nothing from the Greeks, right. nothing from the churches, nothing from the nigger Democrats, none of it. Not nothing from these women's organizations. Nobody's saying that this was a hit on us. This was Tuskegee it's on steroids. It is so pathetic. It's so pathetic that, that we don't have any people standing up. When my son my son joined the Navy. You know, I said, I said, uh, I said, baby, what you gonna do when you when, if you had to go fight? He said, oh, I'm gonna save America. I said, nigga. I said, when you better remember when you if you get in a damn war, you better think about saving your ass. Because I said, if anything happened to you, if you get crippled, they're not gonna remember you as a veteran. They're not gonna remember what you've done. I said, I said, if you get in a fight, and he did end up. He's on the ship and uh, he had some trouble with the Iranians. But the point is this is I told him, I said, you better look out for your own ass. See, mm. you gotta look and, out for your own ass. America, and, my ass. As I told him, I said, you get hurt, they don't they don't remember the vet. They don't remember the veterans. They don't. In they fact, don't. I want to say something stupid to put a joke out here. Go ahead. What's the difference between Kamala Harris and a US Mint coin coin collection? I don't know. Um, the coins are limited edition. <laughs> you gotta love them. You gotta love them, man. You got to. Uh, I'm gonna get to another question. We've been on for like two hours this past. Yeah, 10. we 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 can stop whenever you want, but we need yeah, to do this every now and then. But tell, are people liking this? We can't see it here. Y'all better no, like this. Be one in I the mean, chat. If, we're, like we're, if, if you guys are liking sure. this, uh, we got. They want to ask if you guys are liking this. We got to like. Uh, about 150 people in the chat room right now. So if you're liking this, put a B1 in the chat room so that way we can gauge whether we should do this again. Okay. Uh, he might he might have uh, dropped his phone or something. Uh, See, 1B1, see, 2B1s, 3B1s. Okay. Come on, B1, baby, B1. Come on. I, I, we need to see some more of the B1. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> it took a little second to load up, but, yeah. Black Black Okay, there Black he is. First. Okay. See, that's, what, that's what Dr. Short is telling you guys, is that the only way we can be successful is we have to be black first. And if, if, if you want to see self-correction, you got to begin with, with being the, accepting the fact that you're black. See, all of us, all of us have an African ancestry, but that don't mean we're all African. You see, you have you have to, in a sense, understand that you're B one, you're black first, and by being black first, mm -hmm. there's going to be a tomorrow. But see, you know, I hate to say this, sisters out there, I'm sorry, don't get mad at me. I know you're a pork chop fem feminist, or you may be a lesbian. You may think mm -hmm. you got that white woman sucking your. Oh hand. God, help us! Or you, or you might, or you might, or you might, or you might <laughs> a brother, you might have that 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 white girl. You know, giving you that blow job, but the point is this: white people cannot love you. They can't love you because they've been taught that you're less than. What I say, you they think you're less than. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry to bust your bubble, but no white person, male or female, can love you. Some sometimes, if you go to school with them, and you maybe go to school with them, maybe from kindergarten on up, that might be possible. But un unless, unless you've been with that person for years before you got to be an adult, they can't love you because they've been conditioned to feel you're a, the other. And they have been conditioned to feel that you're less than. Mm. Oh, oh, I got another stupid one. What does Kamala Harris have in common with the Afro pick? Oh. I don't know. Tell us. Bushes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta just, love just one more, you just one more, have to. Just one more, you just literally, more. you just have to. 
One more, please. One more. On, okay, well, it all depends. You know, my joke was, you know, how many of y'all saw that Joe Biden fell down the other day? I saw it. Go ahead. I saw it. Well, you know, I, I wasn't mad at him about falling down. My problem was he got back up. I was hoping that was it. Come on, man. Just please, you know, God strike him. Give him he a looked, stroke or he something. Around, he looked around, I mean, he said. He looked around and said, damn, Randy, Randy tripped my ass. That's what you know, I mean, I'm hoping for him to go bicycle riding and shit. Just something, just quick. Let's be done with this. You know, um, and I'm thinking about um, about uh, Mrs. Biden. You know, <laughs> what does she have in common with Jeffrey Epstein? Go ahead. She gets away with it. <laughs> You know that she gets kids for her husband. I believe that. You know, he groped this boy right here, less than a mile from my house to school. I mean, the president grabbed a little black boy's dick in front of the press and nobody reported it. Yeah, his hand slipped. That's all. It wasn't. Uh, no. Um, in fact, let me tell you something. I was thinking. Tell him, tell him about. Oh, tell I got to tell you a Biden joke. Where, where, which store would Biden consider as a love connection? Bees me. Toys R Us. <laughs> tell them uh, tell them about when you first met uh when you first met Biden, if you don't mind. When no, the first time I saw Biden, I was at Union Station and I was near the statue for A. Philip Randolph, and I was gonna go and talk to him. And he gave me such an evil eye, don't you speak to me, nigga. He he stuck his neck out like a goose. And he gave me the most hateful look, like, don't you fucking talk to me, you black nigger. I'll never forget that. And then the second time I I was at the Nisi American or the Japanese American World War II Memorial, and I saw someone walking, but I stopped to look at the memorial. I was surprised that these Japanese, these Asians be getting stuff they want. They have a special park for just the Japanese that were put in concentration camps and the Japanese 442nd Regiment that fought in World War II. And Joe Biden literally tack tackled me, knocked me over and kept going. I yeah. felt that when I got up, I saw the little ball spot in his head. And I was thinking, should I kick him in his ass? So Vanessa says, you know, that's Joe Biden, Senator. You'll get sold out. You're a student at Howard. Nobody will be on your side. You'll get destroyed. You Let know, it go. But see, so many people think that he's a warm, He's a nice guy, and they just yeah to kids. He's a, he's a oh, Lord. To, to kids. Sure oh, he is. Lord. He'll take a oh, shot with you if he's his daughter. Uh, that's what they say, but you know he's a neocon, and and, and he's worse than that. He's a neo segregationist. Delaware is super segregated. Biden has been president for two and a half years. There hasn't been a fucking news segment ever to look at Delaware. There was no discussion of whatever he did for Delaware the entire time he ran for president. Uh, Delaware is one of the blackest states in the union. Black folks are somewhere between 30 to 40 percent of the population in Delaware. And you'll never hear anything about Delaware. They're, the school, they're, huh? they're very uh, well, well, yeah, but the, they're also very afraid. And because you have death squads that kill black people in Delaware and no news service would pick up that. And I know what it's like to get death threats for trying to expose stuff in Delaware. There's nobody, not even pumpkin-headed uh, Roland Martin. None of these people will ever ask any questions about Delaware. Not at all. Yeah. Now, I want to get you a super chat from our sister. From our sister, um, Nine Nichols. Okay. okay. She. Uh, and first off, thank you, sister, for the super chat. Thank you for giving it. giving money. that money. He needs motherfucking money. We all do in the yes. name of Jesus. Yeah. In fact, you know what? Plant a seed of liberation. Y'all want freedom? Sow a super chat seed. Oh. I mean, you do it for the little fake ass white preachers on television. Why not do it for some Negroes on YouTube? Now, what's her question? Now, uh, or maybe this is just coming, but it says Dr. Yeah. Winners. You are right about the um, R1B. 
It says the R1B Hap Lop Group. Hap Lop Lop Group. group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was a it was a Chad first and came to America. It was also it was also uh, nine nickels. It was also in Guinea. It was also in Guinea. Also in Senegal. In in fact, in fact, the uh, first two slaves, the first two slave skeletons excavated in the Caribbean. The oldest. The oldest skeletons of slaves excavated in the Caribbean carried R1. See, but uh, but see, that was one of the things that mixed up Gates. Gates thought that Gates thought that since the white folks carry R1, he thought that he was white, and he thought that he had finally understood why he wanted that white woman. Well, well, no, you know what? That white woman left his ass, his crippled ass. She did. She's not. Yet yeah, she did. She I did. mean, I wonder if one testicle is shorter than the other, like his leg. It might be. Okay. <laughs> it, just, it just makes me sick, fake ass nigga. Woo. Just no but, chill, just none. But, but none see, up, up for elite, let me explain to you. You know, uh, Gates, Asante is different, but Gates, Asante, these people did not have a PhD in history. You no, know, um, the literature, the literary right? critical. Literature. In fact, you know what? We have to talk about that snaggletooth nigga. That's what we didn't do. Con man West. Yes. Con man West. Oh, you my know, God. We're so busy talking about story. that bitch Oprah. We forgot to talk about that con isn't man on, West. Isn't he on his third white wife now? No, he's on his fifth wife and his fourth white wife. Yeah. You know what we're talking about? We're talking about your boy uh, running for president. Someone just sent me $5. Thank you. I'm going to use it. Trust me. I mean, buying books and all this research cost. Thank oh, you. I, I want to uh, I, 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 I thank, I, I, uh, thank Jason you. B. Jason B. sent me $50. Thank you, Jason Woo! B. Let's go, Jason. Oh, yes. Hold That's on. Let me, That's what let, me, let me see if we're being treated like we're white, you know. Hold on, let me see if I've been treated white tonight. Shout let out me to see. Go to, go to your, uh, go to your, uh... I, I'm looking. Um, let me see. Have people been good? Well, Kenya Prince, she blessed me with five. Oh, no, I nobody gave me 50. I'm glad I'm not a stripper. I'd be mad tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, <laughs> beloved sister Kenya, thank you, thank you, thank you, sister Kenya. Use this. This helps me with my research. It helps me buy my books. You know, you know, Reverend, um, uh, you know, Doctor Doctor Shorty just bought a two volume set that deals with every every black person that fought in the Civil War. I'm going to uh, I'm going to be on Reverend uh, Matthews uh, program on uh, Thursday at three o'clock. I'm going to give you a. I'm going to discuss the Civil War. I'm going to tell you our real history. They teach you. They teach you that during the Civil War, all black soldiers did was dig trenches. I'm going to tell you what we really did, because see, we turned the damn war around. If it yes, we did. Fighting, you know, because see those those uh, white Irish and the rest of them, they were deserving and going back up south. We sure, they the were. And you know what, Doctor Winters, you need to remind them. 40,000 black people from Canada came to fight in the Union Army. They don't even give them credit for that. Those are people because the blacks in Canada are related to blacks in America. 40,000 came down here to fight. And, not, oh, and that was the second time that blacks from Canada came down to fight for black freedom. The only people who've ever, ever sacrificed in any significant way for us the black canadians we need to know that number two tens of thousands of blacks fought in the regular united states army and not in the covered troops including my grandfather fought in the white army although it was it did not tell people it was white um, tens of thousands so the actual black contribution to the civil war it's more than the 180,000 that they give you. It's more like 300,000 or more blacks served in the Civil War, yeah, and, and, which, and is, gonna, which is which is which is huge. And I'm and, gonna talk, and, and I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about. See, a lot of people don't know that the first the first special forces uh, soldier, the first soldier who was special forces, what we call what we call special ops today was Harriet Tubman. 
That woman was yes, kicking ass was. down in South Carolina. She was kicking ass. See, they always tell you just, they only talk about how Harriet Tubman freed the slaves. And she not only freed the slaves, when she's in South Carolina, she burned up plantation. She destroyed the whole economic base. Her and eight other niggas. They destroyed she, the economic base in South Carolina. And Sister, Star, Sister Starlet Thompson, I thank you. Um, I'm going to just say 20. And by the way, when you give me via cash app, I want to let you know, I count that towards our campaign. So it means I'm going to send you a GoFundMe. Thank you. Uh, so that's two people. I thank God for 25. That means I'm half as good as you, but I'm more no, than half your age. Don't man. worry. I'm, I'm not. I'm not worried about. I'm. No, we got to talk about Con Man West. Come on, we need to talk about these nigger communists and these nigger socialists because it's time for the truth to be told. Yeah, yeah, are man. you? Are you with me? Con no, Man no, no, West. Let's, let's, let's do that on another show. Why you want to do another more? show? Well, when is Afro? He's so busy, man. This to I me, mean, he's got more jobs in the fucking Caribbean Afro, and shit Afro, with the good Afro, pizza. He turns, out, he turns out three shows a week. He can, he can, he'll make another time for us. Don't worry. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely trust. find a way to fit y'all in. Y'all my priority. I so, will, well, I, would, I mean, priority. we need to talk about Con Man West. He's full of shit, y'all. My joke is the greatest contribution that. That, that 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 Cornell West can make to American society is to improve his own grooming. Yeah. Uh, if he can't manage his mustache, how is he going to manage a budget? <laughs> how is he going to defend the country if he can't defend his teeth from protruding outside his mouth? I mean, the dude looks like a starfish on crack. Yeah. What's wrong with him? And why is he wearing clothes from the 70s? I mean, moths eat polyester. People don't wear it anymore since Saturday Night Fever went out of style. He What's wants, wrong wants, with him? He wants, he wants to look like the disheveled. The, the, remember, he, he's, he's, he's succeeded. Like, he's the, succeeded. I would give him change if he asked me. Just don't, you know, don't bite me you with know, the he's, teeth he's, he's got. A disheveled, he's a disheveled professor. You know, the professor that's always... He doesn't have time to, to really think about how to, how to dress oh, up. Yeah, yeah, he does have time to do that. In fact, he's sort of like an Afrocentric back to the future. Remember the, the little crazy-ass professor with the pedophile raincoat that's always with Michael J. Fox? Come yeah, on, you've seen yeah. Back to the Future. Bro, we'll yes, you have that. seen it, Afro Lee. You've seen it. Yes, sir. And we'll uh, save. We can definitely put a pin in that and save that for next time. I wanna, okay, uh, well, well we're going to get Con Man West. Con man, please don't support him. He's for illegals. He's for LGBTQ. He beat the shit allegedly out of his the only black wife he had, and she was a tether. Uh, mm, well, real talk. I want to mm. thank Starlet, Starlet Thompson. Thank you yes. for that $20. Isn't, isn't she sweet? Yes. Oh, she's We're wonderful. Gonna, she's wonderful. Yeah, and, and she's given before, it, you know, and thank you. For those that that bless, and this is gonna go around. I know, you know, it's tight. It's the middle of the month, <laughs> but no, definitely, we've got to do this again. Uh, thank you, brother Afro Elite. I hope no our presence is helping, and I'd like to talk to you off air. There's some other people I'd like to see you have on your channel. I think they would also help. We want to see you get to 10,000, you need to have a platform. You're reaching young people. You know, I'm going to say this and I'm going to stop. Brother Afro, do you realize that the school system has purged out the black people, in particular black male teachers that could reach young people? They don't let them in the schools. They let the predators in. Mm. I never had a problem with students. Students love me. When they, when they find a teacher that the students like, Male, they get rid. You got to go. Yeah. They don't want a connection between the generations. What you're seeing is engineered. Um, the scriptures say, "He that hungers and thirsts for righteousness will be filled." The same thing will be for knowledge, empowerment, and freedom. We have to get hungry for this. Okay, the same way we have the munchies after we've done enough blunts to be Mexico. All right, I'm ready to go. Good All night. Right. All right. Well, good night. Make sure you guys continue to bless their cash apps. I will let these brothers get out of here. All right. Good night.
Good night. Take care. Bye. See you. Bye bye. Brothers and sisters, that was Dr. Randy Short, and that was Dr. Clyde Winters again coming back. You know, the, the tag team duo that you can never miss out on right here. One of a kind Afro Elite YouTube channel. If you guys are not subscribed, what are you doing? What are you doing? Where else are you getting that? Where else can you get this type of empowerment? Where else are they doing that? Nowhere else better than here. And we're going to have it again. This ain't no one-time thing. This ain't no two-time thing. What's this, the third time? The third time. Oh, we on a roll. We are on a roll, brothers and sisters. And I appreciate every single last one of you guys for being a part of the train, being a part of the team, being a part of the family. Appreciate that. Love that. All right. Shout out to the Super Chat from Assistant Nine. Shout out to all of the cash apps from Starlet, from um, Kenya, um, from Jason. Shout out to our good brother Iron Will for this hoodie. It's like the short sleeve hoodie. Cool. Nice. Love it. Great quality. Great. All right. Y'all make sure y'all check our brother out if y'all want a copy of this. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just put this in the community tab. I'm going to take that. I'm going to put it in the community tab. It's a good idea. I'm glad I thought of it. Brothers and sisters, we've been on here for a good minute. Monday night. Monday night was lit tonight. It was really lit tonight. So this is a great way to start for the rest of the week. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys subscribed. I hope you guys like, share, reshare, retweet, tweet, post, repost, do all that. I hope you do. And I hope you have a good week. And with that being said, brothers and sisters, I don't want to leave without uh, reminding you all, you guys should be subscribed to my, or following me on my social media pages, which is at Afro Elite on Instagram and at the Afro Elite on Twitter. Okay. And the links to that is in the description, as well as the links to their cash apps, their books, their Gmail, all of that. If you want to get in contact with either one of those doctors, make sure you go in the link, I mean, to the description and you'll find all of the links. So make sure you go support our brothers. Thank you very much. I appreciate that because I know y'all going to do it because y'all always the best. Y'all always on one. So with that being said, my brothers and sisters, be one salute to every single last one of you all. And of course, you all have a good one.